It is your PrisonPlanet.tv memberships that fund so much of what we do here in this operation. And then we're more than happy for the TV show after it's aired live, then be leaked out onto the web to tens of millions of people. That's our goal. Wednesday, the fifth day of December, 2012. And I am your host, Alex Jones. Uh, we are going to have open phones today. We don't have any guests. We have a bunch of breaking special reports we're going to air here on, day, uh, here on the show today. Obviously, if you hear that my voice uh, is deeper than normal, I went out to a federal building in Austin, Texas yesterday. One of my photographers uh, and researchers, Molly Rogers, was uh, in and around downtown Austin taking photos of surveillance cameras. So we have stock footage of the Big Brother control grid, as any publication uh, online or in print does. And they came out to her on the sidewalk and said, we'll arrest you. You look shady. It's illegal to photograph a federal building. So I went back down there yesterday and uh, to find parking, had to park about a quarter mile away, uh, left the bullhorn in the car, in the truck, forgot it. Uh, and so when I got there, I could still scream extremely loud. So for about 30 minutes, I screamed at the top of my lungs, uh, a pretty eloquent breakdown in speech, uh, and said, come out here and tell me it's illegal, because you know it's not. You know you engage in color of law criminal activity. And then about 30 minutes in, we start leaving, and well, I'll tell the story later, and then we should have the video ready by the nightly news tonight or uh, tomorrow. Who knows? We've got so much on our plate right now, but we will we will play that video uh, here on the radio, because it's, it's got audio, obviously, as I give a speech to them. And then as we're leaving, uh, security guards come out uh, and inform us uh, that they're listeners and that we have every right to photograph uh, or videotape the facility because this is not North Korea. And they said, in fact, we'll open the gate up for you. Why don't you try to go into the metal detectors and talk to the federal police officers? So we go in there and uh, they blow up at our cameras and then I tell them this isn't North Korea and explain that they'd come out and, and, and the uh, federal police officer that done it to, to, uh, to Molly was not there. And I said, is that him? Is that him? She said, no. And uh, she described him and they said, well, we apologize. It's not illegal. We understand how that could have scared you. Because, you know, she came back to work and said, really? It's, it's, it's not illegal? Uh, I didn't think it was illegal. I didn't even know that was a federal building. I was just going around downtown. We sent her out there to do it. But she said, really? They'd lie to me and say they'd arrest me? And, of course, you see that in the news all the time where they do arrest people. You see the court's ruling, obviously, that's unconstitutional. But they just keep doing it. And so I told them, because they were kind of getting our face, and I said, well, I'm going to sue you then for civil rights violation, First Amendment, official oppression. And they went, whoa, 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 whoa. So we, uh, we shook hands, and they said, okay, here's a number for you or a place for you to file a complaint. We'll try to find out who did it, which I'm sure is just trying to get us out of there. But I'm not just there trying to get in the face of the federal government. I know it's an incredibly criminal, dangerous, you know, horrible thing that runs al-Qaeda publicly. That's in the news today. Um, but if we let them operate like this is North Korea, pretty soon they'll be sending us to re-education camps if we don't cry at public events properly like in North Korea. And, and I'm not joking. That's how tyranny works. You give in to it, it takes you all the way. It's like tying a giant 10,000-pound lead weight to your ankle and throwing yourself into the ocean with the lead weight. You're going to the bottom. You're dead. That's how tyranny works. It's got a big weight. It keeps going all the way until it hits resistance. Okay? And so uh, I don't like being the tip of the spear uh, because they are dangerous. Um, but uh, it's got to be done. That's why we went down to the NSA to say, hey, it's not illegal to film here, and they had to admit it. Hey, they, they detain and rob 
San Antonio Express News, newspaper reporters with cameras, TV stations, they take their stuff because they don't know how to say, hey, don't you engage in criminal activity. You gotta put the sunglasses on like they live. And once you can see, they go, I got one that can see. We'll be back. And we got 50,000 waters all over the country. Talk about 50,000 unstoppable watts of AM radio, FM radio, global shortwave, 100,000 watts, WWCR worldwide service, XM166 and Infowars.com, PrisonPlanet.com with the free audio streams, video streams at InfowarsNews.com. And that is Clutch bringing us in. Uh, we are live, ladies and gentlemen, on this Wednesday, the fifth day of December 2012, and uh, I was on Man Cow's show this morning, and during a break, he's like, man, what's going on with your voice? Is it getting even deeper? Because I was on there with Jesse Ventura, uh, and I, I'm like, no, my voice isn't getting deeper. I hope it doesn't, or I won't have any voice. I, I yelled and screamed uh, at the federal building here in Austin for about 30 minutes and had a big confrontation yesterday, and... Uh, we were out till about 6.30 at night working on that. We're trying to download the footage right now and uh, not really edit it, but cut it down some because it's 30 minutes long or more uh, so we can get it on the radio. Uh, it'll probably be on the nightly news tonight. If not, it'll be on the radio tomorrow. Uh, but uh, that is uh, pretty powerful stuff. And why do we go down to the federal building? They told one of my photographers that you, they would, she would go to jail for photography of the federal building, and we all know that's not true. We know it's a fraud. Well, at least informed people do. The Supreme Court just ruled last week you can't do that. Uh, they keep arresting people, though. Uh, Illinois State Court just ruled that it's illegal to arrest people for filming the police in public or government buildings. The NSA has lost lawsuits over it. I mean, think about it. The NSA is spying on you without warrants on record now. Every time they do it, it's a felony. Government doesn't care. They're just doing it. The president says the military is now under NATO, UN command. Congress can just sit out and shut up in public letters, statements, and three different congressional hearings. Uh, belligerence by the Joint Chiefs of Staff, arrogance towards Congress. And Congress is a bunch of criminals, uh, but they are the, uh, that is the rightful body that represents the people on legislative matters and uh, on the power of the purse and declaration of war. My, my point is, is that you're in a lot of trouble, folks, when the feds and the local police tell you you can't videotape them. And it happens all the time. You know, I see videos every week where a cop pulls somebody over. They go, is that a camera you've got taping me? You're going to jail. That's illegal. Uh, and they try different things. They say obstruction of a police officer's duty. Uh, they say interfering with a police officer, uh, obstruction of justice, uh, wiretapping. And they know full well it's a fraud. And let me tell you something. When you misappropriate the law and twist it and put that into the court systems, that's official oppression. It's a civil rights violation. It's a violation of the Constitution. It's a violation of your oath. And it is beyond despicable. And let me tell you, the foreign banks that run this country are trying to convert this nation over to a North Korea-style system because they've stolen all the wealth. They've set up the police state. And they're all going to go to jail when this thing comes down. It's designed to come down and make us all poor third-world slaves with the mega elite living in armored, uh, gated uh, rural communities and central uh, scientific government hubs in major megacities. And that's the stated plan of Agenda 21. And they're, they're doing it. And so all of you that serve the system uh, need to know that you are destroying yourselves. It's called killing yourself to live. And the globalists want to get us to a point where we're so bankrupt, so deindustrialized, where our farming communities and our agrarian system is so defunct that we're absolutely dependent on them. They've doubled the number of food stamps the last three and a half years. It's set to double again. Uh, you've got uh, over 100 million people totally dependent on the government one form or another. This, this, this is the process of going into bondage right now. And it's going to get horrible. But... Everyone needs to just speak out and point out this is premeditated. And yeah, it's not fun to go confront the feds and even get, go into the building. That's right, they opened the gate up and brought us in. And what a story this is. It was the security guards were listeners 
And the head security guard, after they finally came out, said, no, you got a right to filming. You want to go file a complaint? Opens the gate up and we go in there. And the federal police that were hiding inside went completely ape. <laughs> The wicked flee when none pursue. I got to tell you. I mean, you guys came out to a little lady and said you'd throw her in jail and that she looks shady and could be a terrorist and all the rest of it. And so we went down there. I mean, just said, look, this isn't North Korea. I mean, you know, you have a five foot four or five little blonde. You guys are telling her she's going to go to jail and freak her all out and that she's a terrorist. I mean, just come on. Is that really what you want to be? You really want to play drama queen all day like they're a real terrorist out there. Your bosses run the terrorist. FBI Deputy Director O'Neill, John O'Neill, gave what London Telegraph interview and a few others uh, saying the government was going to stage a terrorist attack or allow al-Qaeda to do it to take our liberties and attack Afghanistan. I've made films about it. It's on record. Any journalist listening can, can pull that up. And uh, he still wasn't that smart, though. He's a smart guy and a patriot, showing the whole federal government's not criminals. But at the very top, they are. It's, it's the folks that ran Fast and Furious and others like that. And he got given the contract that ended September 10th. His first day on the job was September 11th. This is like New York Times, folks. You can go look this up. Guess who had the contract? Um, Marvin Bush had the contract and, and said he was in the attack in the subway when it happened. And it was so interesting. That was actually an AP interview. You can look it up. It's also London Guardian. It was so interesting that um, he was in the subway. He got it, cleaned his stuff out that morning, handed it over to O'Neill at about 8.30 in the morning and left. <laughs> Unbelievable. You cannot make that type of stuff up. You cannot. And if you're a new listener, folks, you can just search what I just said. Marvin Bush, head of World Trade Center Security, or John O'Neill, deputy FBI director, head of counterterrorism, dead in the towers, uh, cover in New Yorker magazine even covered it and said, isn't it interesting? Isn't it a coincidence? Isn't it a coincidence that the Bushes, uh, former President Bush was meeting uh, at the Carlisle Group, private shareholder meeting in D.C., a mile or two from the Pentagon when it got hit at the bin Laden table. They even like to tell you that. Oh, he was at the bin Laden table with the Sheikh bin Laden, the head of the family, and uh, they were the only ones allowed to leave the country in the next three days, dozens of flights. That's all on record. See, when you have a memory, and I don't know football scores or, you know, what some uh, closer pitcher did in college. You know, I mean, I mean, men out there, their favorite teams, they know what all the players did their whole life. They know their mommy and daddy's name. And men are real proud of this, you know, that I know all this stuff. So you have the capacity to be a winner in business, a winner with your family, a winner in life. If you took all that time and energy you spent on sports and put it into the stock market. Let's say you don't want to save America and save freedom. You just want money. If you didn't spend all day lazily learning all about male, male soap operas, sports or watching action invention movies uh, that are just ridiculous where where special forces are like superman it's not real folks if you weren't living in the fake projection reality and if you studied the real reality read all the cfr new world order stuff where they communicate like we don't even exist they write books about how they're putting cancer viruses in the vaccines and laugh at us how they're putting sodium fluoride in the water how they're dumbing us down what they're going to do how they're going to turn the power plants off how they're only going to shut off u.s uh, energy and they're now, now they got all the colleges getting ready to move and shut down the energy sector and and, and what an idiot you are uh, and I'm sitting there going, man, there's like hundreds of books. I've read them all. They're by all these world leaders, how they're setting up this German chancellor, this British prime minister, this head of Harvard, you know, this science czar. And I'm sitting here while they just, and I watch everything they say they do. I've read stuff they wrote 100 years ago. They've done it all. I read stuff they wrote 50 years ago. They've done 70% of it. I read stuff they said 10 years ago. They've already implemented 30, 40% of it. I mean, they're doing it. And when they don't succeed, they try, try again. And we've got them held back seven, eight, nine, ten years, depending on which actuary you look at. And the globalists give prospectus reports on that. Their war against humanity, their war against the family, the war against... Have you turned on the sitcoms, the dramas, the movies? 
Every message is fathers are scum, fathers are trash, fathers are, are rubes, fathers are schmucks, fathers are suckers, they're lazy, they're scum, they're trash, the single mother's the boss. And then I go out and I see these single mother women march up and just walk in front of your car and order you to stop, walk up to you in a store, tell you you got too many kids. They're just, yes, man, boy, they're in programmed house slaves of the New World Order. Oh, you don't think they just had black women who were house slaves. That comes from Rome. You bring the women in the house, keep the men out there. You beat them and you torture them and you, 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 you don't let them learn how to talk. You take the women and you set them up as the bosses and boy, they're going to carry it out. We're following a 2,000-year-old Roman slave manual, literally. They've got university studies on that, I've discovered from the 70s. Did you know the slave manuals in the Americas from the Caribbean sugarcane fields to the cotton fields of Georgia were retranslated Roman slave manuals from Latin? Better learn about the real world. See, I know about slave manuals. I don't know about your stupid football and a bunch of roid heads on cocaine running around killing each other. I could care less about that. I've been around some of these professional athletes, and they are so arrogant and on power trips, really believing they're rock stars. In a false paradigm, you're nobody. If you were king of a dream, what would that mean? If you were the king of a fantasy, what would that mean? And I've got trouble dealing with their false reality because it is the reality for most people. And as I more and more don't care about it, I don't even care about combing my hair or putting makeup on this zit I've got on my head right now. All I care about is getting through to your brain and waking you up. Now, the scumbag, technocratic, wannabe, control freak, Bob Costas has told you, gun owners, to go to Hades. And he's come out and doubled and tripled down against the Second Amendment because he's got globalist backing and more mainstream news admits our government runs al-Qaeda. It's all coming up today in your phone calls. Monday through Friday, 12 noon to 3 p.m. We're here, back weeknights, 7 o'clock Central, in Full Wars Nightly News, back Sundays 4 to 6 with a live radio show. It'll be live this Sunday. Okay, um, wow. I mentioned this report yesterday. Al-Qaeda Link grouped Syrian rebels once denied now Qaeda anti-Assad victories, and it goes on to admit that it's real Al-Qaeda, and they say that they are going to attack America with missiles that they've been given by America after they bring down Assad. And that's part of the plan. They'll be let in, they'll blow up aircraft, and the TSA will show up on highways everywhere and grope your wife and beat the living daylights out of you and drag you to a FEMA camp. That's the next phase. I told you 10 years ago they'd be on the highways everywhere. I told you they'd be in the malls because they said they would. So I'm not just saying this is going to happen. I really believe it. If I say something and, I'm, and it's not satire, which I'll tell you when it's satire occasionally, I mean, I really am saying this is going to happen, okay? Uh, but let's get into Bob Costas here. Uh, Bob Costas won't back down from anti-gun remarks. That's out of Market Watch uh, and the Wall Street Journal. Uh, he says that he will not back off. And boy, we have a clip of him on NBC uh, that is about seven, eight minutes long. We're going to play some excerpts. It is unbelievable. See, he's got the backing of the NFL and NBC. And he says, you know, we shouldn't be anti-gun during the NFL. We understand. Because like 80% of NFL players, we estimate, are probably gun owners. Uh, and uh, he goes on, Costas doesn't back down from gun comments. That's right. Blame the Second Amendment. Not the thug culture in the NFL. Not the spoiled brat steroid culture. I mean, I look at that guy. He looks like he has the chin of somebody who's taken gallons of, of uh, growth hormone. Oh, but I bet we'll never hear the autopsy. I, I Guaranteed he was seeing a psychologist. He, they said he was on painkillers and other prescription drugs. Guaranteed on serotonin, reuptake inhibitor, Prozac class. They always are. It always comes out later, a year later. Uh, so he fires back at his critics. We're going to be uh, playing uh, a disgusting clip of that in a moment. And then an amazing video I saw uh, from a, a YouTube channel. Uh, Mr. Colin Noor, and it's uh, Bob Costas' gun control speech response, one minute, 32 seconds. Very eloquent. That's coming up in the next segment. Uh, but right now, uh, first off, he says it's disproportionate that 65 out of 80 Colts players he talked to own guns. Um, number one, that's about the national average. It's a little over 60% in the country own guns, punk. So it's I say 150 million gun owners. That was a number five, six years ago. It, it, it's more like 170 million people own guns, okay? 
or 100. Most households owned, have firearms. It's closer to 70%. And they have Justice Department numbers that say it's over 55, but, but our intel is a lot of folks just are quiet about it. Now, rich people or, or wealthy, high-profile folks, um, they've pretty much all got guns or they've got bodyguards. If you don't have guns and you are known to have tens of millions of dollars, you better have guns or you're going to be robbed. Okay? Uh, you add to that, there is some thug culture, tough guy stuff going on. Uh, Costas says 25-year-olds don't need guns. Wow. Wow, you can join the military at 18, go kill people. I have a lot of family, I know you do, that joined you know, in World War II when they were 15, 16. Uh, do they, can they, uh, it's all about getting people to grow up early and being around guns. I mean, how many military we have that have guns at 18, much less 25? How many police are 25 years old? A lot. Can, uh, oh, you're going to have trouble? You're going to have trouble, period. So don't you take my rights because there's people that have bad behavior out there. That's how the Soviet Union worked. If somebody on your street did something bad, they'd randomly shoot three or four people. The Nazis did that, too, in occupied areas. You shot an SS officer, they'd kill 100 people. Shot a regular German soldier, they'd kill 10. Somebody on a street uh, killed somebody, they would burn the whole street down or uh, bring in uh, bulldozers. And that's how this works. This is pure authoritarianism. Oh, uh, there's criminals with guns. We're going to take yours. How's that sound? Let's let's well let's just go to break so we have a long segment to play this to come back and analyze this Costas clip. He said, even if all those guns were obtained legally, you can't have 65 guys in their 20s and 30s, aggressive young men, subject to impulses without something bad happening. Really, I've I've been super aggressive my whole life and had guns everywhere. Never thought if I was arguing with my girlfriend or my wife, and I had girlfriends before my wife. My experience is it's usually women that start punching you or whatever. You know, if there's an argument or you say you're leaving them, I mean, we've all been through this, and slap, then they hit you or they throw something at you. I mean, I never thought about I just like, I'm out of here. Or if they're jumping on you, slam them down on the bed, you know, and say, stop it. But the point is that, that I would never think of that. What has people have breaks is steroids and pain pills and antidepressants. I mean, I look at those NFL guys when they're out there playing, and they look like space aliens. White, black, Hispanic, you name it, doesn't matter. They look totally screwed up. They're obviously on steroids and growth hormone and a bunch of other exotic stuff out of their minds. You know, that mother on Prozac drowned her little children. Do we get to ban bathtubs? Monday through Friday, we're here. Thank you for tuning in. You have found at the front lines of the info war, waging war on corruption, crashing through the lies and disinformation of the globalist, trying to rally patriots worldwide. Uh, coming up after I get into Bob Costas and his savage demonization of the Second Amendment and the fact that he now has doubled and tripled down, we're going to play that video and audio here in a moment and then get into a powerful short response that I saw posted on YouTube. Uh, and before we get into all the other geopolitical news, I'm gonna cover a lot of news this hour, then open phones the next two hours as well as news. I was just, I, I saw the news report, I read it, and then I, during the break I watched it out of Chicago. And when I opened the phones up, I wanna hear from folks in Chicago specifically. Now this guy had a sweet little bull terrier puppy. Uh, the police came to the guy's house to give him a ticket. The dog walked out. They sh just walked out, didn't growl, wagging his tail. I've seen videos like this where a lab gets out of a car wagging its tail and the cop shoots it. I mean, obviously, if it's a big mean dog running up growling, I could see you shooting him. In fact, I would. But all the time, little dogs or a lab, there's that famous video where they're, you know, giving the guy a ticket, the cops searching the car, uh, the, the, the golden lab jumps out and is clearly wagging its tail and you know the dog wants to go running around hunting or something and i mean labs don't are the sweetest dogs around and the cop just kills it and i see this all the time but what's amazing is the chicago police came back and got in the guy's face and said you shouldn't have called the media and this is like a well-spoken you know fella too on top of it i mean it's bad enough when the police are oppressing thugs because they think they can get away with it uh, this is what happened to our reporter. She's downtown taking photos last week. Doesn't even know it's a federal building right there because it's not marked. Down by the Capitol. She's taking photos of the Capitol. And all of a sudden, the guy comes out with a badge and a suit and a tie, you know, dressed like 
men in black and says, you look shady. You could be a terrorist. I could arrest you. I could arrest you for, you know, for terrorism. It's illegal to photograph a federal building. And she came back freaked out. And I said, it is not illegal, Molly. Molly Rogers. And I said, let me go show you. They just had a Supreme Court ruling a few days ago. And I showed her that. And she said, wow, I can't believe they'd say it's illegal that I could go to jail. And it's not. And I'm going, yeah, I know. That's scary, isn't it? It's a dangerous government. This is a mafia gangster government. And a lot of police departments aren't like that. And, and you know, because they've got, they come, you know, from, from areas that support and protect the Bill of Rights Constitution. And they've had good leadership. You normally either have a good history in a department or a bad history. Well, Chicago is famous for a very corrupt police. I mean, that's not debated. Same thing with New York City. You know, we've had Serpico on many times. And just to come to somebody's house and do that is amazing. So we're going to play that newscast uh, and uh, analyze it. In fact, guys, I, I have the local news print out on that. We, but will you print me that particular newscast print up so I can plug the station and the rest of it? Uh, thank you, because that's coming up here in a few minutes. I'm going to get into the Bob Costas situation uh, here in a moment. Uh, you know I print over 110,000 uh, of InfoWars magazines. And what happened is the... Uh, the magazines we held back sold out in one day. More than 30,000 held back sold out. And it usually takes the three different distributors we have in, in from Austin to San Antonio, usually takes them about four days to, to distribute uh, 70,000. I mean, they're everywhere. And Color Glossy Magazine, it's an outreach we do, free. Uh, that's why we sell them at cost to you, so you can give them to people. But we got to pay the shipping and you know for the printing and all that, and the graphics and the rest of it, and and, and, and the reports. Money goes into it. Well, I ended up. Uh, it's kind of good this happened because I, I snap food. I kept saying, "Well, pull this th this route, pull that distributor," and they're like, "Well, this distributor last Friday's already distributed half." And I go, okay, well, whatever they got left, pull it. Well, they hadn't distributed half. It was one of the small distributors, so we got an additional ten thousand. So this will be like only putting. 50,000 on the street and uh, having close to 50,000 actually sold, that's good. Uh, now, you can get these in bulk up from 10 up to 100 at cost at InfoWarsStore.com. And then we held back three or 4,000 so that any added subscriptions for the month, you know, you'll also get it with a 12-month 12, 12 uh, subscription. It's also available. Great way to wake people up. You, but this is the this man wants your guns issue with Barack Obama on the cover and gets into the next four years and the globalist agenda from shutting down our power plants to bankrupting the economy to how they say they're going to come after our guns outside of law through executive orders and regulations. And it is so important to get out to everyone you know of the magazine available at InfoWarsStore.com. And the way they're going... Uh, first day, we were selling like 15000 a day. Then it went down to about 10000 a day. And then now it's like 5000 a day. Uh, we've got less than 10000 right now. They will go very, very quickly. Because I walked back there and said, so we sold out. And he goes, well, one of the courier places delivered a whole bunch yesterday. I guess they hadn't delivered them when we said bring back whatever's left. So we got back more than we wanted. But this will be it. They will go. And if you want the one-year subscription, get that as well or buy them in bulk at cost. Okay. Our first issue sold out are... Um, our uh, fourth issue selling out, the, the other two didn't. There's a few back issues of those. So when you get a subscription while supplies last, you also get some of the back issues uh, when the first one comes. Uh, and lastly, uh, on that issue, uh, it will end December 10th. We, we, we are the biggest seller of ProPure stainless steel, gravity-fed, highest quality, top of the line, destroys the competition in side-by-side -side comparisons. We have all those comparisons at InfoWarsStore.com. Stainless steel uh, spigot, not BPA, you know, no plastic. That's why it's so great. Uh, there's some good plastics out there, but the point is this is stainless steel burnished uh, and lower price than the plastic ones that are out there is what's amazing about it. It's what I use, and they're 15% off of the promo code WATER15. And you can't forget it because it's right there on InfoWarsStore.com or InfoWarsShop.com. We'll take you the same place or call 888-253-3139. We have the supplies to go out past uh, December 10th with that price, but we want to make sure... That even if you want it delivered to you snail mail or not UPS or FedEx, you have those choices that it'll get to you before Christmas. Great gift to give. I like the Pro Pure Traveler. But it's not much smaller than the big ones, and it's a lot less. So uh, all up there, the lowest price, InfoWarsStore.com or 888-253-3139. And the... Uh, 
Christmas shopping, again, can be over. You can give them gift subscriptions or give them stocking stuffers, buying the magazines in bulk. You can give them InfoWarsNews.com. Uh, memberships to see the nightly news, the daily radio show, all my films, a bunch of other films. One membership is 10 memberships, $5.95 a month, or get a yearly membership and get 5.3 months free off the price. You just pay for 6.7 months, you get 5.3 months free. That's what the special comes out to. They have that, but also you can just buy a month to month and uh, give it as e-cards to your friends, the username, passcode, and say, here is your InfoWarsNews.com uh, underground, you know, Patriot information uh, site forbidden info, and they'll go and put in the username, passcode, uh, and check it out. Again, if you just joined us, and I sound more raspy than usual, I think I'm kind of working it out here. I went and screamed at the federal building, as I said, uh, because they told our reporter they can't take photographs in America. Uh, and so I went and screamed at them for a while, and then uh, security guards came out and said, hey, uh, we're listeners of the show. You have a right to... Uh, Go file a complaint here at the gate. <laughs> I said, you're going to get in trouble. And he goes, nope, it's my job. It's your right to go in there and file a complaint. So I went in there and he was like entering a beehive. <laughs> Anyways, um, but they're not all bad guys. I mean, it, it's federal marshals. Well, one federal marshal that sent me um, a bunch of unclassified stuff. It wasn't restricted, but not for the general public. Uh, you know, the MIAC, Homeland Security Report, stuff like that. That was state police with the MIAC report where they say veterans are the number one terror group and gun owners are evil and all this other traitorous stuff. Okay, speaking of gun owners are evil. Uh, here it is. Bob Costas won't back down from anti-gun remarks. Wall Street Journal. Uh, here is the Daily Herald. Costas doesn't back down from gun agenda comments. Bob Costas fires back at his critics. Uh, uh, it's just totally disgusting. And he doubled and tripled down, blaming the Second Amendment. And basically said men can't be trusted with guns. And really the implication is, because most NFL athletes are black, uh, is that blacks can't be trusted with guns. And then you've got, I mean, that's really what he's saying. And then you've got the, um, you've got the um, black sports writer for Fox Sports saying the KKK wants guns legal so blacks kill themselves. And I mean, and he's saying blacks can't own guns. I mean, these people are acting like black people uh, are, 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 are just, you know, just, just can't be trusted with anything. And, and, and that's the attitude of the left. We're going to put you in compact cities. We're going to break up your families. We're going to pay the women for 50 years to not have men in the house. We're going to wonder why you go from 11% illegitimacy to over 90%. We're going to wonder why more than 10% of the black population is in prison. And what is it, close to 90% have felony records. I mean, that it, it's just unbelievable. And then you send them, and it's happened to white kids, Hispanic as well, to the colleges of crime. Where that's, it, it's like hunting. It's like Comanche Indians raiding other Indians. That's the, you know, the manly thing is to go out and rob liquor stores. And the rap music put out by MTV. I mean, I've talked to high-level folks at MTV. I'm just going to leave it at that. Boy, this is big. In 1996 or so, and they're telling people, we're now going to put out gangster death rap, cop killer rap. We're going to kill rock and roll and all the rest of the music because this is the message that the establishment wants. They force-fed that to destroy the entire culture. A lot of people say, oh, good, I'm racist. Destroy the black people, sell the drugs in their neighborhood. It's like the uh, Godfather line, which is very accurate, about, I don't want it sold to kids. Keep it with the colored people. They're animals anyways. Let them lose their souls. That is the racist attitude that's gone on. But, folks, that's a, 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 a no pun intended, black hole to suck everyone into it. Okay, that is what it is. It, it, it's so dehumanized. The globalists, people say, oh, kill them Arabs. Just nuke their whole area. Good, I'm glad we've got Al-Qaeda over there killing them. As I've heard that. So what? Just let them kill each other. Yeah, we're using Al-Qaeda. Big deal, Alex. Well, they're using Al-Qaeda to take my rights, too. The globalists hate the American people because we have a history of liberty and fighting back more than anybody. They hate us a lot more than the Arabs. So when you're like, hey, let the blacks die, kill each other. Hey, let the Arabs kill each other. You know, Roscoe Pico train, hey, boss hog. There's all these people that think they're part of the power structure who aren't. Look, you can't do bad stuff to other people and not have it come back on you. Okay, I mean, it is just unbelievable. And here's what's happening. There is a collective consciousness. There's a collective, it's been scientifically proven with computer breakdowns, 
sixth sense has been proven. They don't know really how it works, but it's the same way I believe fish and birds, and we're even more advanced, know when a tornado's coming, know when the cold front's coming to fly south. It's why it's been proven. Uh, because that's why we used to go down to Ambergris Key in Belize, because we had friends that were microbiologists with government grants who lived on Ambergris Key. So my parents would go a lot more than I did. And they were studying lobsters and groupers and things, but it's now been proven off that 30-year research that, that lobsters, a half a day before a big storm hits in the coral that beats them to death, they that's how ancient natives knew that when a hurricane was coming, before the wind was even blowing, when it was blue skies, a half day, a day, sometimes two days before, the natives say when the when the uh, lobsters come out of their holes and walk out into the underwater sand dunes, a hurricane's coming. And it turns out all ancient cultures that lived in Pacific areas or tropical areas, in their own translations, say when the lobsters walk or when the crabs leave their holes and go out into the deeper water. I mean, how do they know that the, the brain, folks, is an incredible computer, and it's been proven humans. That guys type in, uh, uh, you know, studies prove uh, birds and fish, but it's also humans. Birds and fish uh, have have magnetic uh, sensor cells, and they've proven humans have a sixth sense. You know, when somebody's looking at you, I can't tell you how many times I've been on our family ranch that doesn't have a lot of poachers on it. It's big. You know, we've had it since the 1830s. And uh, I'm walking through total woods, you know, a mile for many people. And I'm walking in the woods and I feel somebody looking at me and I feel it. And I walk through a glade, through an opening and somebody's like, oh, am I not supposed to be over here? And a guy's up in a, up in a tree stand. Well, I mean, you know, the guy had a rifle out and was sitting there like an idiot. Let me look at that guy with the scope. I felt those crosshairs on the back of my head. One time I was down in Waco prote protesting the Ku Klux Klan. We got that video somewhere around here. A little bit of it's on the internet. Mike Hansen's got the whole thing. I know he does. Mike, we put that up on YouTube, please? I know uh, folks listen. He has the Mike Hansen channel on YouTube. And there's like a parking garage 500 yards away. And I just kept feeling something. And I'm protesting the Klan, and they're saying, my Second Amendment means I have the right to kill this guy. And it later came out the guy was a fed. I mean, I knew that. That's what it demonized the Second Amendment is have the Klan go around and promote it when they're actually the ones that were against it. And I'm sitting there, and I just feel it, and I look up, and I couldn't even see it 500 yards in the parking garage, the cops with sniper rifles. I just walked towards it, and there were the cops. As I walked up, and Mike's with me, he's got with the gun on me. And I went over to the police and I said something and, and they said, get out of here, Jones. And it turned out they knew the Klan were feds. And they had called the Klan out to support the Branch Davidians who didn't want them. About half the Davidians were Hispanic or black just to demonize the Davidians. And the cops were all in on it, the Sheriff's Department, the McClellan County Sheriff's Department. I mean, that is the dirtiness of this country. That is how dirty, dirty, dirty. And I was looking and the cops had their guns on us the protesters, and not on the Klan. And I was wearing a T-shirt and blue jeans. By the way, it like I had some backpack and was suspicious. They knew who I was in McClellan County. That's the county, isn't it? We had just built a memorial church for all those that died there. That's America, ladies and gentlemen. That's America. That's the kind of stuff that goes on. And I was getting off into this. The point is there's a sixth sense. And... Collectively, they've pumped the image through the media and the culture that we're animals, we're ugly, we're bad, we need to die, there needs to be a bioweapon release, the world's be better off without humans. They've sold that idea so that we collectively download that and decide we're failures so that we'll go out and be failures. And this isn't metaphysical like it's some magic thing like the secret, you say it'll happen, it will. You say it'll happen, you start believing it'll happen, you will take actions that will make it happen. Not it just appears like a genie gave it to you. If it's possible, if it's, we're made the image of the creator of the universe, folks. We are creators. We're little creators. But look what we've built. And the devil and his fallen angels, they are not creators. They have to manipulate us to build things they want, and they want to play God. And even if you don't believe in all that, the elite believe in it, so they're manifesting that. You notice Revelations is starting to unfold with the chips and the big brother and all the rest of it. And, and believe me, folks, you're not going to get raptured out of this. That's a distortion.
And so you better make sure you get your soul right and you're on the right side of this because that's all that matters. No matter what happens to your body, folks, you're going to die anyways. You've got to step across the fear line into the empowerment area and, 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 and realize that we all collectively are wishing for our own destruction right now. At some level, we all hate ourselves because we're not righteous. We have become degenerate. I'll get into Bob, Bob Costa speaking of degenerate. It is degenerate to blame law-abiding citizens for what a bunch of gang-banging drug addicts do. And uh, we're going to talk about this demon and play these clips coming up. Stay with us. We are going to just have a jam-packed show today. Um, we are going to release the White House footage of the bin Laden raid. Uh, and yes, it's satire. The Easter Bunny is involved. Uh, total theater, zero dark Easter Bunny. Uh, we're going to be uh, premiering that audio video here that breaks down the fact that it's an admitted fraud with Jakari Jackson and Melissa Melton. And then we've got a bunch of other uh, reports we're going to be premiering, and I will give the uh, phone number out starting uh, in the next hour to get your take on all this. But Bob Costas says he's not apologizing. He's sorry he used the NFL to do it. But now he's going to go grandstand and say, you know what, you don't have a right to own guns, Okay. And, uh, of course, that little scumbag, you know, has bodyguards and also has guns. And he's saying NFL players in their 20s and 30s are stupid and cannot be trusted. Let's go ahead and play this clip. Talented people in all the sports on our program on Sunday night said that one year when he coached the Colts, he had 80 players before they cut the roster down, 80 players in training camp. He said, how many of you guys own a gun? And roughly 65 hands went up. Even if all those guns were obtained legally, you can't have 65 guys in their 20s and 30s, aggressive young men subject to impulses, without something bad happening. And I posed this question. I didn't have time to pose it on Sunday night, but I'll pose it here. Give me one example of an athlete. I know it's happened in society, but give me one example of a professional athlete who, by virtue of his having a gun, took a dangerous situation and turned it around for the better. I can't think of a single one. Uh, that's pure bull. Sadly, Stop right I can there. Think of dozens. Whereby we need to go look that up because I've seen cases where people tried to rob professional athletes and they protected themselves, not just in uh, football, but in golf, basketball. I, I remember cases of that. So, so their idea is, of course, the real FBI statistics are for every crime, where a gun is used, it's more than 14 times, some statistics are over 20, that it's used to frustrate crime. Everybody knows lower crime rates, more guns. Um, it's so simple. You have less home invasions in areas. The less gun laws, the less home invasions. Kennesaw, Georgia made it the law. Decades ago, you had to own guns. The suburb of Atlanta, they had a crime wave, and their crime dropped by 87% in one year. That's just department numbers. You can pull those up. There's been documentaries made about it. But this idea, and, and they go on from there. It goes on and on. It's like a seven, eight-minute clip. We'll play some more of it coming up in the next hour. But I want to go to break with this clip. Bob Costas, gun control uh, speech response. This is from uh, just a wise man on YouTube. Here it is. As far as I'm concerned, there is no current gun culture. America's gun culture began at its inception. America's gun culture will ensure more and more that the woman alone at home with her kid can protect herself when three armed men arrive at her back door. And attempted mass shootings will no longer end in countless lives lost, where the husband and father can come home to his family after an attempted armed robbery. Handguns give people a fighting chance in a world where evil is no respecter of man, obeys no rules, and who's appearance cannot be determined with any precision only that its appearance will definitely be made at some point in the coming days evil will be overlooked as too easy an explanation for why javon belcher did what he did but here's what i believe you take away guns from american history and there is no america there is no platform for bob costa to share his opinion on national television take away guns and you take away people's ability to protect themselves you take away people's ability to protect themselves in our world where evil does everything it can to deprive us of life you take away our right to life in the history of man and gun, the gun has remained constant, always at the mercy of man's influence to launch his projectile at an intended target. And as far as history is concerned, man has always determined the target, whether lawfully All or All right, lawfully. we're going to break. We'll play the rest of this coming up. Second hour, stay with us. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live. I will be giving out the phone number coming up in the next segment to take calls for at least the last hour and a half of the transmission today. Please have your questions and comments ready. Obviously, uh, what do you think of Bob Costas doubling down? That's one of the questions I'm going to be asking. 
just basically saying men cannot be trusted to own guns. Men are bad. Uh, only government men are good. So he would like to move to North Korea. Uh, we have the really big news I haven't even gotten into yet in detail. You know, we covered McClatchy yesterday. Al-Qaeda-linked group Syrian rebels once denied now key to anti-Assad victories. So when you're walking down the street taking photos and stuff, and the cop pulls over and says, you can't take photos in America, I'll arrest you, which happens everywhere, just constantly in the news every day. Uh, you can say, really, the government admits they run Al-Qaeda uh, and are letting them take over governments. I mean, I look like Al-Qaeda. I, I mean, because they... And go, look, officer, I know your training manual will say it's veterans, gun owners, conservatives, libertarians. Do you really think we have a good government that demonizes the founding fathers? Why don't we stop the drama queen fake reality garbage where, where I'm a criminal now and I'm a, everyone's a suspect and no one has rights because you're doing your job keeping us safe. You may not be a bad person yourself, but the system is becoming criminal and oppressive and it's time for the people to push back. Okay. Uh, also, I haven't even really plugged this. Um, tonight on the nightly news, again, my voice is shot if I'm laboring here, apologize. Uh, I forgot to bring a bullhorn to the federal building yesterday and I screamed at him for 30 minutes. He just joined us. So it's a good thing I'm going to be taking your calls because I don't know if my voice is going to hold out. I don't even know if I can do the nightly news tonight. Because I'm telling you, after two more hours of this, I, I just don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm actually losing my voice right now. Sign language, sign language is the answer, yes. Radio sign language. <laughs> well, you know, all the info babes on TV reading the news, that is sign language. What is the um, international sign for headlights? All right, I'm out of control. I apologize, and I'm not going to try to be funny. Uh, Joe Rogan tells me I'm really funny in private, and uh, uh, Bill Hicks' former um, producer, Kevin Booth, says I'm funnier than Bill Hicks. I mean, not just, I don't think that's true. I think I could write comedy that funny, but Bill Hicks had his own funny way of delivering it, you know. Oh, wait a minute, I am Bill Hicks. I had a face change and everything else. I am Bill Hicks. You didn't know that? You, you haven't heard that, CJ? Oh, yo, you've heard it? No, I've had people come up on the street and go, man, Bill, it's just it's so incredible. And I'm like, you're joking, right? I'm not Bill Hicks. I'm not Bill Hicks, but people always say, why don't you respond on air to the fact that you're Bill Hicks? I have like 10 times. I'm not Bill Hicks, folks. And, and yeah, yeah, Bill Hicks would be like 60. And I've responded to it, and people say, oh, why don't you respond? I ought to create a video that we can just email people when they email us or, or call us or whatever, where it's like an auto response, and I could tape it now and then just use that, like why I don't respond. It's always respond to Genesis being owned by ABC. It's not. It's a fraud. It's not true. Never owned by ABC. One time we leased a satellite to be on talk radio from Clear Channel and ABC because that's who own the Star Guides. They use different satellites now. It'd be like saying I work, I'm, I work for Apple because I have an Apple phone. I mean, it is, it is just, it's COINTELPRO stuff. But people say, you need to respond to the fact that you're Bill Hicks. And, and folks, I am not Bill Hicks. So uh, they even went and found my high school yearbooks, which is great because I can't find them. And my kids are always wanting to see them, and they scanned them for me online. So I'm actually pretty thankful for that. I, I found that once and sent it to you guys to save. I don't think I ever showed it on air, though. But, I mean, they actually went to the Rockwall Library and physically got them. By the way, I want my Anderson High year books. I, I, I don't think I ever bought those. I did two years of high school here. Well, folks, don't look. Don't look at my Anderson High. Don't go find them And because it's not real. And Because I'm, I'm really, no, 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 no. Don't upload them. Don't upload them. See, I, I want those photos, so they'll go do it. <laughs> All right, my friends, another hour of worldwide liberty. As we wage war on corruption, as we crash through the lies and disinformation, as much tyranny is taking place in this world, you do not want to miss a single broadcast or segment of this radio show. Because when we do confront tyranny, when we do stand up against corruption, it dissipates. But when we roll over like a bunch of sheep to wolves, our society will go to hell in a handbasket. And the globalists want us to be a basket case society so we can be sent to hell in a handbasket. 
All right, if you just tuned in, Bob Costas uh, went on the news last night. We're going to play that clip again in a moment. Uh, and says he does not back down from gun comments. Uh, that's Daily Herald, Wall Street Journal. Bob Costas won't back down from anti-gun remarks. And he went on to imply people are stupid. Uh, you know, that the people are too stupid to own guns. People don't know what he meant. But he apologized for doing it during the NFL. So here he is saying you shouldn't be able to own guns, basically, and endorsing the Fox sports writer, who I played clips of yesterday, saying, quote, the NFL and people that support the Second Amendment, quote, are the new KKK and are racist. I mean, it's like saying, uh, you know, I like a steak instead of chicken. Oh, that's racist. Oh, I don't want the TSA to stick their hands on my pants. Oh, that's racist. Uh, oh, oh, I think, you know what, I like Bermuda grass instead of St. Augustine. Oh, that's racist. You know, I think I want to have uh, brown floors instead of white floors. I, I think that's racist. You know, I like marble countertops instead of stainless steel. I think that's racist. You know, I tend to like Coke over Pepsi. I think that's racist. You know, I tend to like uh, Dos Equis beer over Budweiser. I think that's racist. Uh, you know, I tend to uh, like the summertime. People say they don't like the heat. I tend to like it. I think that's racist. I mean, basically, if you have any view, opinion, it's just, you're a racist. And, and the people say it and stand back, getting ready for you to fall over. And it's, you, know, you don't like government-run health care? Hardball Chris Matthews, slimeball, you're a racist. We played those clips. You don't like big government? You're a racist. You're a racist. You're a racist. I mean, it's just, but you know, the good news is the ADL does this. If, if you don't like the police state, if you don't like the New World Order, if you don't like Big Brother, if you don't like open borders because people come in and get free welfare and we're going bankrupt, you're a racist. And they say you're anti-Semitic. They lost a lawsuit where some theater chain owner was suing somebody over a contract. And they just sued him and said he was, or they came out and said he was a racist, anti-Semitic, so he sued them and won. Um, I told the ADL once I was going to sue them, and uh, they, they removed something out of an article because it just wasn't true. I mean, you know, I'm not a litigious, angry, aggressive person just out of the blue. When Bob Costas comes out and says gun owners and guns are to blame for things uh, in the corrupt NFL culture, and, then, and, and now comes out and says you can't trust men in their 20s and 30s to own guns, I mean, that's a quote here. This is an attack on everyone. If, folks, if they get the guns, everything goes. If they get the First Amendment, it all goes. And they federalize the churches, totally violates the First Amendment. Uh, the churches opted into it through fraud. Now they're forcing churches to do it. That's how it always starts. First it's voluntary, then it's mandatory, because they've got dumbed-down enforcers that will go seize churches that aren't 501c3. I mean, this is outrageous. What's going on? And it's not my opinion. They're, they're only getting away with this because of a sea of ignorance. So we're going to get back into this and then a bunch of other news and your phone calls. I'm going to move quick now, but here's Bob Costas, uh, a clip from him on NBC last night. Even of all those guns, here it is. Tony Dungy, one of the most respected people in all the sports on our program on Sunday night, said that one year when he coached the Colts, he had 80 players before they cut the roster down, 80 players in training camp. He said, how many of you guys own a gun? And roughly 65 hands went up. Even if all those guns were obtained legally, you can't have 65 guys in their 20s and 30s, aggressive young men subject to impulses, without something bad happening. And I posed this question. Didn't have time to pose it on Sunday night, but I'll pose it here. Give me one example of an athlete. I know it's happened in society, but give me one example of a professional athlete who, by virtue of his having a gun, took a dangerous situation and turned it around for the better. I can't think of a single one. Get paused. So sadly, I can think of dozens. Whereby okay, there you go. Yeah, you got an out-of-control rock star culture. Look at rock stars, all the bad stuff they do, the killings, the deaths, the Rolling Stones caught with a dead kid in their room, sacrificed, didn't get in trouble in New York. Oh, you didn't know about that. Look at all the corruption, the, the, the drug overdoses, the murders. The I, I mean, that's... Most rock stars are white. Are we going to say all the white people are criminals because because you've got a bunch of white rock stars acting like animals? It's the same thing with uh, predominantly black athletes. I mean, obviously, on growth hormone, roids, you know, heads that look like they're the size of, you know, heads on Mount Rushmore, giant chins, buffalo hump from steroids, uh, bleep breast. I'm not going to say the real name of them. The whole deal. Those guys are on drugs. 
you can look at most NFL players and tell they are just roided out of their mind. It's like looking at a tomato. You can tell if it's radioactive and you know been non you know and been GMO. You know, it's 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 ridiculous. I mean, I've worked out in a lot of gyms. You can tell when somebody's on roids. They're walking around sweating, got zits all over them, giant chin, bloodshot eyes, staring at you like they're real tough. Uh, you know, that's the type of stuff we're talking about. And those guys are all on drugs, just like Lance Armstrong was on drugs. And almost all the cyclists, they're almost all on drugs. It's all corrupt. It's all a joke. It's all a scam. It's a fraud. Just admit it's a fraud. Stop being so naive. And he wants to sit there and say, I mean, I, there have been so many cases of professional athletes getting robbed and defending themselves or people trying to carjack them. I mean, I, I just remember back there in the back of my mind, a bunch of cases. So listeners, send us examples because you've got the collectively the big brain out there to show tips at Infowars.com. And I'm going to have my folks call through that. Help us. Uh, because I know there have been a bunch of examples of people that have defended themselves. But, I mean, you see it every day where gangs come in with guns to a computer shop or a jewelry store and a woman, an old man, pulls a gun, starts shooting them or runs them out. I, I mean, it's, it's, it's 14, 19, 24 times, depending on which year and which Justice Department number. And they're even trying to play it down uh, where people dozens of times more often use weapons to frustrate crime than when it's used. Any police will tell you that. I mean, you go into areas of New York and Chicago where they've banned the guns and where the system has allowed the drug culture to flourish, it's incredibly dangerous. You don't have to tell me that. They allow drugs to be sold and operate in East, areas of East Austin where I used to have to go to be on local cable access. I went down there for a decade. And I mean, I would try to find safe ways to get there because it was like ambulances and dead people everywhere and, and, and crack dealers running up and hookers running up to you and uh, you know, cops watching you when you're getting gas when a hooker comes over and you're like, I'm not with her. Yeah, but then the cops do nothing. It's like, it's like they, harass, they harass people going into the bad, well, they harass white people going into, quote, bad neighborhoods is what's going on because you must be there to do something. They don't mess with the dealers themselves. And I was going over there, and, of course, I would have to go edit over there late at night because you could only get the editing rooms in the middle of the night because they were always booked up. Back before I even had computers or editing stuff, I would go there and make my own films, voice them on three-quarter-inch tape. I mean, you know, we're, they had like 70s equipment. When I first got into talk radio, the first place, they're like, you can't use the computers since you're only on the weekend. Here, you can use this reel-to-reel -reel tape because the, uh, the little minion guy didn't like me. The program director and the general manager did and give me the job, but some of the others didn't like me because they were like Democrats and thought I was a big Republican because I was into guns and stuff. And I'll never forget them going, you can use this. And it was like a reel-to-reel -reel where you had to cut it and everything. I was like, okay. And he's like, yeah, you figure out how to do it. And I got somebody else, and they go, well, we haven't used this in years, but I'll show you. That's what they say. And they showed me, and I used it, and you know what? Ha, ha, I'm on 140 radio stations and publish a magazine and reach hundreds of millions of people a year on YouTube alone, and I'm on XM. You didn't stop me. And I'm not like, ha, ha, I'm a big shot. I don't get into ego stuff. I'm all about defeating the globalists, but I tell you, one area is people that have tried to hold me down and people that have tried to stop me, people that have tried to get in my way. I do have a real pleasure out of the fact that they're literally, I, I looked them, I actually looked them up. They're a bunch of losers. The guys that gave me the jobs are big winners. They've moved on to bigger and better things because they, 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 they weren't intimidated by talent. They weren't intimidated by liberty. They were freedom lovers. They knew to give me my shot in radio. But all the scum nobodies that really didn't do anything around there, they hated my guts. You know what? I looked you up just last week and some of you guys, you're a bunch of losers. I'm a winner. How do you like that, you little commies? All right, excuse me. Uh, continuing here, ladies and gentlemen, I just never get to this clip. When we come back, I'll play the clip of, I did find the guy's name. I want to get him on the show. Uh, MrColinNor.com. It's his YouTube channel. And it's gone viral the last day. That's the power of it. Went, put it up yesterday. It's got 64,000 views in one day. And, and they hold the view count back. When it updates again, it's going to be like 150,000. Then it's going to be like a million. You just say something makes sense, resonates, boom, you're successful. That's the free market ideas. And that's what the globalists don't like. And so that's what's happening. And that's what we're dealing with here. Oh, I like his blog. It's got pictures of him with a rifle. Firing. I love muzzle burst, don't you? This is a symbol of freedom right there. 
And so we're going to play his clip when we come back, and I'll finish up on this NFL thing. Then I'll go to some calls, and then I'll uh, get uh, back into the news because there is a lot of it here to cover today. Bureaucrat says it's wrong to advise citizens to arm themselves. The San Bernardino City Attorney said we can't protect you. Get guns, lock your doors. Now he's been forced to apologize by the feds or they won't get any city money. Uh, also, uh, more reports in mainstream news. Uh, U.S. aircraft carrier arrives off Syria. U.S. now ready for uh, direct military confrontation to back al-Qaeda. Syrian rebels, when we're finished with Assad, we will fight the U.S. with the missiles the Pentagon gave us. They're publicly saying they will come here and fire missiles into aircraft. And that's great. The government's like, great job. Take out Assad. We'll ship you over here. Let you blow up some stuff. Give us a mentally retarded patsy. We'll put him on the news. How's that sound? They're like, match made in heaven, Saudi Arabia, British intelligence, U.S. intelligence, Israeli intelligence. Bob Costas knows full well there are many cases of NFL athletes defending themselves from carjackings and home invasions. We've already found quite a few in the last five minutes. Listeners are sending us more. Uh, but he knows that the NBC audience is a bunch of dumbed-down uh, idiots on fluoride brain damage. That I mean, the elite revel in the, how they've dumbed everybody down. That's, that, that's what they count on. So they don't care if we find 500 examples. They'll just tell you that guns never protect anybody and, and, and lie to you. It's, it's, it's what they do. Uh, but we're going to boycott the NFL, and we're going to boycott NBC. They're all backing him. And uh, we're going to boycott you because you want to take our rights. You're tyrants posing as liberals who care about us when you're scum. And Bob Costas, of course, tried to cover up uh, the uh, pedophile valley uh, there at Penn State, and he tried to do all that. I mean, he's just a piece of trash. That's all I can say. So there you go. You are a piece of garbage, Bob Costas. And we know you were put up to do this, and we know you're going to be protected. And that's fine. But, uh, folks, a lot of you will turn your guns in for the NFL. I understand that. So that's what matters. And, hey, that's what you're into. That's your manhood. That's fine. I want to go to this uh, clip that uh, I mentioned uh, by uh, Colin Norm. Uh, here he is breaking down uh, the facts of the Second Amendment and the right to keep and bear arms. This is some real knowledge uh, condensed, so listen up and listen good. As far as I'm concerned, there is no current gun culture. America's gun culture began at its inception. America's gun culture will ensure more and more that the woman alone at home with her kid can protect herself when three armed men arrive at her back door. And attempted mass shootings will no longer end in countless lives lost, where the husband and father can come home to his family after an attempted armed robbery. Handguns give people a fighting chance in a world where evil is no respecter of man, obeys no rules, and who's appearance cannot be determined with any precision only that its appearance will definitely be made at some point in the coming days evil will be overlooked as too easy an explanation for why javon belcher did what he did but here's what i believe you take away guns from american history and there is no america there is no platform for bob costa to share his opinion on national television take away guns and you take away people's ability to protect themselves you take away people's ability to protect themselves in a world where evil does everything it can to deprive us of life you take away our right to life in the history of man and gun, the gun has remained constant, always at the mercy of man's influence to launch his projectile at an intended target. And as far as history is concerned, man has always determined the target, whether lawfully, unlawfully, negligently, or recklessly. To blame a gun for man's decision is to foolishly attribute free will to an inanimate object. The ability to carry or own a firearm is a right, not a commandment, and I respect the rights of any individual who chooses not to carry or own a firearm. I only ask that the same courtesy be granted to me when I choose to exercise my right to do so. That's right. And this liberal idea that if someone else is going to do something bad, we need to take your rights. You know, oh, I guess you can't have a car. People kill people with cars. More people are killed with knives every year. Look it up worldwide, not just here in the U.S., than with guns. We're going to restrict knives. People kill each other with bow and arrows. Going to restrict those. People kill each other with hatchets. People kill each other with knives in prisons. People use drugs in prisons. You can't keep anything away from anybody. That's why you only have to have laws to prosecute people after a crime is committed against someone else or property. Anybody that says, oh, we're going to be moral, we're going to ban drugs while Big Pharma pushes all these deadly drugs on us as well, they're doing that so they can raise the price of it and control it and have a controlled market and corrupt the government. The British brought down the entire Chinese uh, government and then broke the country up into more than 10 parts 
uh, resulting in the Boxer Rebellion and other things, over a 50-year period of bringing opium into the country. The Chinese made a big mistake. They were the only country in the world at that time that outlawed opium. You could buy opium in the United States. You could buy opium in England. You could buy it in Japan. You could buy it in anywhere pretty much in Africa where there were apothecaries or shops. You could buy cocaine, you name it. China said opium is illegal. Oh, man, you know what happened. <laughs> Something that was dirt cheap was now 20, 30, 40, 50, some cases 200 times what it was in other countries. And the British ship captains that already controlled opium worldwide, British East India, Dutch East India, Dutch East India that merged later, they would come in, they would pay off the Chinese police. They took over those cities, took them about a decade. Then they took over the next key cities, up the highways, up the trainways, up the railways, into the country. They took over those cities. They, it took them more than five decades to take over the entire country and then say, we now rule, break it down, break them down. And that's the drug war. They got control of the organized crime. They got control of the police. They got control of the mayors. They got control of the governors. And then they brought down the dynasty and brought down the whole government, and you know the rest. And they broke the country up for the allied uh, colonial powers to control it. That's what's being done to America and Europe with the drugs. Yeah, there is a uh, friendly little dog that got shot in Chicago for walking outside, not even growling at the police. It's been released from the clinic earlier. I said it was killed. I was rereading the article. Uh, but the owner says the police returned. Well, it's actually on video and said, why are you talking to the media? You're not basically allowed to do that in America. Kind of like police say you're not allowed to film us all over the country and they arrest people for wiretapping. Uh, I mean, if we give into that, folks, we might as well move to North Korea where we can really get treated like proper slaves. So that's coming up. Uh, I'm also going to get into uh, some of the economic news and police state news. Everyone in the U.S. under total surveillance, NSA whistleblower says, that's already come out. Hacker uh, locates J John McAfee through smartphone tracks, uh, and reportedly he's now gotten into Guatemala. Uh, and we've got his number in Belize, and we've been talking to people there. He's, he's not there, so we need to hear from him. Um, but uh, I think that was disinfo they put out, saying that they'd been captured by the Belizean authorities. And again, whereas I don't think he killed that guy, I think, he, uh, I think he's getting into this James Bond stuff a little bit too much and, and is a pretty eccentric person. Now, that's my uh, breakdown on that fellow. And, of course, a lot of analysts say they don't believe he killed him either. A lot of police analysts are saying that, and the Belizean government is famously corrupt. Also, doctor says genetically modified wheat, a perfect chronic poison. Uh, well, I want to get into 20 shocking examples of how sadistic and cruel people ha have become and tie it into this dehumanization that's going on. But before I do that, let me just give out the number here um, on any of the issues I've covered or whatever you'd like to talk about. Uh, what do you think about Bob Costas? The toll-free number to join us is 800-259-9231, 800-259-9231. The reason I want to hear from you on this again is we had a lot of people calling the office and stuff wanting to get on air. You can tell people are really hyped when that's happening, going, I want to make a point, I want to make a point. And obviously, we've heard a lot of logic out there. What would have happened if Nicole Simpson and uh, Ron Goldman would have had a gun when whoever came out of the dark with that knife was there? Uh, what would have uh, you know happened uh, in Nazi Germany if people hadn't been disarmed? I mean, the examples go on and on. Uh, and Bob Costas just thinks you're stupid when he says, oh, you, know, you can't trust athletes to have guns, 20 and 30-year-olds. Oh, when can we have them, 40, 50? I mean, can I be an adult? People used to become adults when they were 13 or 14. Thomas Jefferson, you know, was doing adult things when he was 15. Uh, and by the way, it's a lie that people got grew up earlier because they didn't live as long. It, there was double to triple, depending on which era and which time, of, of infant mortality and child mortality worldwide from the equatorial areas to northern Europe. It's pretty much the same throughout history. That around 30 to 40 percent on the low end of children die before the age of 10. And most of it when they're babies. Uh, a lot of women died in childbirth. I, I've got ancestors. We've done the genealogies because it's very interesting. I've had family that's done them all in detail on both sides. Um, my family genealogy is actually in a lot of books, so my mother's got a lot of those, and I've read some of them. Uh, and, uh, I mean, I had, like, great-great-great-grandpas who had, like, four wives. 
and, and 40 something kids. I mean, they would just wear them out. And it wasn't that the women were being abused, it was just what humans did. You know, had one wife, had seven kids, had another, had 12 kids, had another, had nine kids, had another, I mean, you know, just armies of children, uh, you know, living to 90 something years old. So if you take out women dying in childbirth and children dying, people lived over 80 on average, and they've got major historical breakdowns of this, okay? Our life expectancy is lowering, and they now officially admit that, okay? Let's get that straight. People live on average less, even with the worst infant mortality from the 17th and 18th century, okay? If you made it past 10, folks, you were tough as nails, all right? And that's how it is, okay? So there's all these lies about this stuff, and... I don't know how I got off into all that, but um, it's just how my brain works. What was I talking about to get off into mortality and life expectancy and lifespan and all the rest of it? The age of gun owners. Well, yeah, no, no. People were being sent when they were 10 if they showed the aptitude and were serious. That More than intelligence, it was steadfast and sincere. People were being sent when they were 10 as couriers. They were being used in war. They were being used as trusted uh, you know, 10 year old assassins, culture wide, all cultures. Kids are some of the best fighters there are out there. And, and the whole issue is you're supposed to grow up and just get more and more manly, more and more knowledge, more and more strong, okay? And instead, you know, you're supposed to be a kid till you're 20 and well, I'm gonna have fun in college now and getting all this debt and then, oh, I'm just working to make money now. I'm working for retirement. Well, now I'm retired. I don't wanna be involved. It's all a lie stealing your humanity from you. And I'm just thankful that my parents basically, you know, said there's two ways to raise somebody. You can either totally shelter them or throw them to the wind. And I was thrown to the wind. And that was a good thing. It was good for me, because nature puts out a lot of stuff to quote KRS-One, looking for the one. And I'm not saying I'm the one, but obviously all of us out there have been successful. Generally, it's because you've actually seen some things. And I, I look back on growing up, the things I saw, the things I've, it's been a, it's been a giant adventure. It's, this stuff I've done and seen, I'll never say on air, because no one would believe it. You know, and, and, and people see what I've done the last 17 years on air and our exploits and our adventures, and they don't think that's real because they're living these catatonic lives in their basement, never getting out, scared of everything. And, and I've lived a primitive life. I, not, not, not compared to Navy SEALs that do 300 missions a year or people like that. See, that, that's why even though we're a corrupt empire and what those guys are doing on average is evil and bad, you still have to respect it because it's real. You see, they're actually out there seeing real things, doing real things, and that's what makes you a human. Is the adversity, is getting past your fear, is taking action. I mean, 99.9% .9 of people aren't going to march into a f federal building you know, a closed, you know, secretive shop and, and get into the building through the fence and then get in and then confront them. And, and those feds were like, what, is this a one-eyed, one-horned, flying purple people leader? Same thing when we stormed the Capitol twice. That's not a big deal. That's what you're supposed to do. Or you're a slave. <clears throat> so I'm not exceptional. The general public is incredibly unexceptional. Okay, I mean, I, I go back and research my ancestors, just all of them. It just goes on and on and on. The adventures and the shootouts and the wars and the fighting bandits to deliver cotton to Houston and the just unending stuff. And, you know, somebody's rude to you at church. Well, let's go outside, get your gun, buddy. And, you know, and, and there wasn't actually a lot of that going on because people were polite. Because if, if you cross somebody, they'd be real nice to you. But you crossed them, okay, let's go outside. You want to handle this with fists or swords or guns? Hollywood popularized guns. Most of the time, people just went outside. Let's go outside. Only a coward would use a gun. That was in the cases where it was bad guys, bandits. They wanted to use a gun because they didn't want to get in a fight with some frontiers person. Don't, but don't you understand where you come from, no matter what color you are? Every culture has gone through incredible adventures. Every culture has gone through adversity. And we have become these decadent blobs in this artificial civilization. 
I'm not defending the civilization. The globalists say they want to replace it. They want to replace it with something worse. They want to make it more decadent, more controlled, more stratified. I'm ranting and I said I'd go to your calls. The issue is that now you can't have a gun when you're 20 to 30. Quote from Costas. Guys in their 20s and 30s, aggressive young men, subject to impulse, without something bad happening. Well, they, they haven't had the life experiences up to that point. Now they've got $20 million, and now there's people getting in their face. In fact, I'm reading what football players are saying, how they get robbed, how people try to carjack them, because they're big targets. And like Luke Scott believes guns are necessary for the safety of athletes. Well, no kidding. I mean, most people that are wealthy or in their celebrities are scared to go out and take bodyguards with them. I mean, I've been every Hollywood person I've known has to take two or three uh, bodyguards out, you know, who stand there in the bushes while you sit there and eat hot dogs or whatever, <clears throat> because people will run up and throw themselves on you. Schizophrenic women will run up, jump on you, and then say you raped them. And so, of course, the athletes have guns. And then some of them are decadent. They're on drugs. There's going to be problems. Don't take my guns because of that. I know I'm ranting here. And so that's why I went off into all that. You know, people need to grow up younger. People need to, people need to be in sports, but I mean full contact, uh, mixed martial arts, boxing, all of it. People need to get in the ring and fight. My children have been in some of it, but I'm going to put them in just in, I'm, I'm putting them into everything. Because I know all this stuff, and I don't even put it into function. People need to be in fights. They need to, 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 and I, but instead now, people don't fight, and all of a sudden, somebody just pulls a gun out and shoots somebody, because they're such cowards. You know, they want to act like a gangster. They start a fight with somebody. Oops, this person's going to beat me down. Let me just pull a gun out. Anyways, I'm ranting about this. They need to be in controlled combat. They need to be in that so they have respect for it. But instead, no wonder the left wants people's guns. They, they want to enslave us and control us at the top. But the average left jellyfish literally walks around like a self-propelled stomach, talks in a cowardly voice on pur purpose, is absolutely scared of everything, and kind of just sneaks around everywhere. And we need to not let these people run our culture. We need to rediscover testosterone. We need to rediscover strength. We need to rediscover the frontier spirit. We need to rediscover respect as well. And that's my 500 cents on it because I've made a lot of points here. Uh, let's go to Wes in Ohio on the NFL issue. Uh, thank you for calling today, Wes. What's on your mind? All the NFL. Uh, yes, sir. How are you doing today? Good. Good. I uh, you heard you earlier say something about Bob Costas come out with this uh, garbage about he can't find one example of an NFL player that had a firearm could defend himself. Does anybody remember Sean Taylor 2007 when a intruder broke in his home and shot and killed him? If he had a firearm, he could have defended himself. Very simple math. Well, that's right. But I mean, we found a bunch of cases uh, uh, here. We're going to have Paul Watson or one of our other great writers uh, do a report on it. But, I mean, it's not just NFL. We're, we're finding all sorts of athletes. Folks, send us golf, baseball, soccer, basketball. Uh, I mean, I've seen so many cases of professional athletes running intruders off or hands up, you know, catching people robbing their houses. I mean, you're crazy if you live in some $5, $10 million house in a wealthy neighborhood and you're a celebrity and you don't have a gun. I mean, I don't have bodyguards. I got guns. I got a gun in my car. I got a gun right here in my desk. I got guns. And, I mean, it's, it's like a tool, like this pen. You know, anybody ever tries to come after me, I mean, you know, I don't live in fear. They can walk up behind me and kill me, you know. They just turn me into a martyr. But the point is, I don't live in fear. But at least if, it, if I see it coming, you know, you better hope I don't see you coming. Anything else, sir? You made a great point and hung up. All right, Bryce in Missouri, you're on the air. Thanks, Alex, for taking my call. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I just want to make a comment about the uh, gun control issue. And then uh, at the beginning of the show, you talked about revelation unfolding. And, and uh, I, I think I need some clarification on that, but, but I kindly disagree with you on that. Uh, but on the gun control, uh, I, was used, I, I used to be an actual uh, person who didn't like guns and 
I thought they should be outlawed and we don't have a need for them because it would, you know, that whole Kool-Aid bit. And, uh, and a history teacher told us in high school that, uh, you know, the reason why nobody's taken over this country, whether it be domestic or foreign, is because we have the right to bear arms. So I'm thinking domestic. What's domestic? You know, we don't have any domestic enemies unless somebody tried to invade the country. Well, he explained that, you know, in case of government has too much power and wants to enslave humanity, et cetera, uh, you're not able to do that with, with 145 million people with guns. So. Uh, I thought that was very interesting, and that was, you know, 20 years ago. Now, you know, you talk about gun, it's such a loaded word, no pun intended, that, uh, you know, it's like you know, you don't want to even talk about gun because if you talk about gun, oh, that means, you know, all these things come up, all this propaganda and Kool-Aid that's thrown in your face on a daily basis today uh, comes up. So, um, you know, I hope people can teach uh, the truth in the public schools out there for any uh, public teachers and stuff, but uh, Alex? No, no, I agree with you. Listen, I'm not going to get into the religious debates because it's all been scrambled up one side and down the other to deceive the people. Uh, but my Bible says that the rapture happens after the devil is defeated. It's clearly a five-year-old could read it and see that. And then that's all how that's interpreted. But the Bible has become a giant, and it's distortion, a giant cop-out with Romans 13 and Revelation to say, praise the Lord, they're trying to put chips in people. That means Jesus is coming back next week. We'll be out of here. And all these cultures, when they're being massacred, you know, the Tutsis by the Hutus, they were Christians. They thought they were about to be raptured. Or people, Christians in Germany thought they were going to be raptured. And it's just uh, Chinese under Mao thought they were going to be raptured. And it is a demonic cop-out. Uh, and God's not going to, I mean, the Christians out there, you think you're just going to lay around all day and let evil take over and, and just go to your church and feel good about yourself. God's going to say, I don't know you. Go you know, get out of here, go away from me, I, I, I don't know you. Because what you do to the least of these, you do to me. Uh, but I don't want to get into a, a, a debate, okay? I just know, as a creator of the universe, I have a spiritual connection, I know what I need to do. And there's a bunch of Pharisees talking about don't listen to music or don't do this or that, but they're not out protesting abortion clinics. They're not out speaking about cancer viruses and the vaccines. They're just a bunch of Pharisees, the same ones telling Christ, don't hang out with that prostitute. Don't hang out with the tax collector. Don't hang out with these people. Why do you think he was hanging out with them? To bring them the information. I mean, I, I've been friends with Joe Rogan uh, since, uh, I guess, 14 years, since about 98. Smart guy. I like him. Funny. Don't agree with some of the things he says or what he stands for. Don't particularly like some of the worldliness, not that I'm perfect, but man, plus I like him, plus having him on, we're going to air a big uh, thing with him tomorrow, a, a big interview I did uh, this weekend, it gets his entire audience to tune in here. Duh, now we're waking them up to the cancer viruses and the vaccines. You know, now we're, now we're, I mean, I was on Chicago TV this morning talking about the cancer viruses and the vaccines and, and reading over documents. I mean, I want to warn people about cancer viruses. I want to reach them. I want to reach the worldly people. I want to affect them. Yeah, you know, I remember Doug Stanhope when I first met him about 11 years ago, you know, right after 9-11. He didn't believe it was, you know, thought it was wrong. Now he says it's an inside job. Uh, now he says the bin Laden raid's totally fake. Doug Stanhope, incredibly funny, incredibly profane, uh, uh, very, you know, uh, eugenics-based, doesn't understand that. But by being friends with him, and that's not why I do it, I learn how it turned into something good, I then can reach out to all his huge fans. And now I'm changing him, you see. Doesn't mean I fully changed him, but I'm changing him. I'm changing him. Do, uh, do you understand that? Hello? Yes, do you understand that? Oh, yeah, no, I agree. No, hey, uh, I don't want to talk about the rapture. That's not the point. It's that the revelation, we're talking about the end times. There's a lot of conspiracy theorists out there that think all this stuff is pointing towards the end times. And that's not. No, no, I understand. Listen, I don't believe the end of the world or revelation was 70 AD and the sacking of Jerusalem by Titus. Believe me, I'm, I know all this information, sir. Have examples of professional athletes and NFL people protecting themselves with guns everywhere. And Bob Costas knows that. He just thinks his audience is so stupid he'll go, there's not one example of them ever doing something good with a gun. You know, these athletes, they're young, they're out of control. He means they're black. They can't be, I mean, he, it's such condescending racism. Yeah, is there some gangbanger culture across the board in professional sports? Yeah. But that's, that's a, that, that is a minority. The whole thing's decadent. I don't like it. You know that. It's turned into a gladiatorial Rome diversion. 
But, uh, you know, this statement, well, these 20 and 30 year olds, you know, they can't have guns. Uh, I can't see any good going on, Bob Costas. And that's what the left did, the handgun control group did. A white guy brought in two black guys in, was it 99? It was in the cover of the Statesman, Metro and State. Look it up. Alex Jones catches bribery at State Capitol. The video's on YouTube. Uh, and a uh, lady runs in and says, hey, that guy's paying those people $300 a piece saying good testimony. And it was like a movie. I walk out, he's paying the last one. 20, 40, 50, 100. Here's another. And they're like, and I go, you just got paid off. Yeah, we did. You know, oh, look at your little kid. I go, that's not my son. They're like, oh, yeah, it is. Ah, ha, ha. Making fun of some lady's kid. And uh, it turned out it was illegal. Nobody got in trouble. It was a state ethics commission investigation, and they found it was illegal. Uh, the chairman of the committee got in trouble. <clears throat> And it was a white guy bringing black guys in to stand up and go, we're, you know, gang members or were, and we're scary. Ban guns for, you know, ban the shooting sports in Texas is what they were going to do. And ban the gun shows. This is how they operate. And, and I, for one, am sick of it. Uh, let's go to a phone call. Chris in Georgia on communism. Go ahead. Come ahead, Chris. You're on the air. I promise. All right, let's move to the next person. Let's talk to Nicole in Michigan. You're on the air. Hello, Alex. Hi. I just wanted to mention a couple of things. First off, I'm an herbalist, and I would recommend that you get yourself some peppermint and honey tea to help soothe your throat right now. And secondly, I was under the misguided, I'm, I'm using sarcasm here, but I was under the misguided notion that we've got uh, terrorists all over the place. Shouldn't we as American people be able to defend ourselves against these evil terrorists that we keep getting told that are all over? Well, the problem is, that's a good point, is that when you get all the training manuals that are public, there's nothing about Al-Qaeda. It's all about American gun owners and uh, conservatives and veterans and how we need to be disarmed and put in re-education centers. That's now in the official Army manual. Uh, we've literally given you the code number four probably 50 times. And uh, here's McClatchy, uh, L.A. Times, you name it. Al-Qaeda uh, group Syrian rebels once denied, now key to anti-Assad victories. <clears throat> the CFR three months ago said they're commanding Al-Qaeda. Uh, U.S. aircraft carrier arrives off Syria. U.S. now ready for direct military confrontation. That's uh, prisonplanet.com, but direct links uh, to the Australian newspaper, Debka file. Uh, and Turkey newspapers, and so uh, they're now ready for a direct confrontation with the Assad regime, backed up by the Russian government, uh, and our government has put in at least 50,000 Al-Qaeda fighters and has given them missiles, shoulder-fired surface-to-air to bring down aircraft. They are shooting down helicopters, jets, you name it, and uh, they are in the news. Uh, Syrian rebels, and this is in McClatchy newspapers, uh, when we finish with Assad, we will fight the U.S., so... We need to have articles, prepare four missiles to bring down aircraft, and the feds love it. They will let them in, blow up. They will shoot aircraft when you take off from your local airport. They will blow the engine off. They will kill you. And uh, the media will say we've got to give our rights up, and there'll be no discussion that our government gave them the missiles and runs al-Qaeda. What do you think of that? Oh, yeah, I believe it. There's one other thing I wanted to mention. Sure. Um, there's a diverse... Uh, I don't know if diverse is the word, but there's a clear difference between the, the people that grow up with the parents teaching them how to go hunting and how much fun and spending. That's a good point. Time. Stay there. I'm coming back to you in 60 seconds. Stay with us. All right. I'm really going to try to race through your calls in the next segment. And we've got our uh, bin Laden raid footage released. We believe that the Easter Bunny will also give you some eggs uh, coming up on Easter. Um, but we're going to be breaking that down a lot in this third hour right now. There always is a lot in the third hour. I don't know which hour is the best, though. I think the first is the best sometimes, and I think the third is the best. Because then I'm forced to cover everything in the third hour, but I rant pretty good and I'm fresh in the first hour. I don't know, but we have a lot of guests in the second hour, so what is the best? Let's talk to Nicole in Michigan. She was uh, finishing up, uh, getting into, uh, well, restate what you were saying. Go ahead. Well, the, the thing I've noticed is that, you know, the families that the parents teach the kids, there's, you know, how to use the guns, gun safety, and they make it a family uh, uh, thing to go out and go hunting and forage for their own food, have less gun-related issues, less 
accidents. No, no, I agree. A lot of people don't get guns until they're 20 or 30, and they think it's all movies. And then it's like they've noticed if you put somebody in a uniform, they act authoritative. Or if you put somebody in lingerie, they, you know, they suddenly get sexually excited. It's the same thing of, of, of here's a gun. They get all crazy with it. It's like a deer hunter who's 30 years old, never gone deer hunting. The first deer they see, they start shaking and freak out or shoot the neighbor's cow because, you know, they call it buck fever. Uh, you know, it's kind of like these greenhorn cops that can't even swim, can't even fight. Now they're pulling you over. They're so scared. They shoot you because they think you're Al-Qaeda because the news told them so. But also, when you take your kids out in a garden or you take them out hunting or you take them out camping, they're designed to do this. And they get into the ooga booga mode and start, you know, really getting excited. But if you don't do it when they're young, they never get into it. So it's part of the domestication process. I agree. Sorry, go ahead. My father, when, when he noticed I was getting in, interested in his guns, the first thing he did was went to the grocery store and bought some watermelons and shot them in front of me to show me how dangerous guns really are. Because you can't tell a, gun, a, a kid how dangerous a gun is with words because kids, they, they see information, the hearing information doesn't register as well. And so he <laughs> shot up some watermelons to show me these are not toys. You don't touch these. These can kill you. Yeah, what's done, what's done in the country is you're always slaughtering pigs or cows. And what you do is, you know, you take somebody out and you say, don't touch the guns. And people say, oh, this is so primitive. No, this is what humans have done with swords and things. If you look back and, you know, you got to butcher it and you shoot the cow in the head. The kids think it's interesting because they're designed to not think it's, it's false that they'd be freaked out butchering fish or cows or whatever. And then, you know, the tractor pulls them up by chains in the barn and you butcher the cow right there and they learn how to do it. And it's real interesting. There's the liver. There's the kidneys. There's the, there's the cow's three stomachs. And, but they understand you, you aim this at something, it kills it. Uh, now, I, I've seen stuff butchered, but that's not how I was taught when I was about four years old. I was interested in guns, and they took me out and let me shoot Folgers coffee cans with a 410 shotgun, and I wanted to shoot the 12-gauge, let me shoot that. Thought it was great. That's why I shoot 50 cows handheld. Don't think they kick. People think guns have kicks. I don't know what they're talking about. You pull it in your shoulder. And then my dad said, all right, see that Tweety bird up there in that tree? It was a bird you're not supposed to hunt, but that's you know how you teach them whatever's available. And he takes a 12-gauge, blows the Tweety bird to bits, and I, and I thought that was a little sad, his little feet. It was all that was left. And he said, you don't touch these ever and and then that's and then nobody in farming towns you ever get shot my dad my dad went to a pretty big farming school he went hunting with his coaches on their farms and people and with the principal and stuff and they all brought their shotguns unloaded uh with their boxes of shells put them right in their lockers and they'd all go out hunting together i mean that's just what you did <laughs> I mean, and that's so alien to people today i'm sorry go ahead the sad part is most of our children today learn how to hunt through video games. Their parents are absent in that regard. Their parents don't realize that these kids are sitting in their rooms using the computer and the video game to babysit them. Exactly, and then it's been proven to dehumanize you where real killing doesn't affect you anymore. That's why real men would get upset by death because they knew it was real. I mean, let me tell you, when you got a buck, 20 yards below you with a compound bow pulled back and he looks right in your eyes and you let that thing go. I mean, you know, it's something when they fall over and die. Here's some of the top stories right now on our news website, InfoWars.com, and I'm going right to your calls. DARPA, sponsored company, unveils drones that can fly through doors and windows. Tiny craft could be deployed by police into buildings and homes. And, of course, they'll be weaponized using your tax money. Got an article over $7 million a year is given to police departments to buy armored wheeled tanks, machine guns, you name it, speed boats, uh, hand grenade launchers, you name it. They're preparing for war with us. U.S. aircraft carrier arrives off the Syrian coast. U.S. military is announcing they're preparing for direct intervention to put al-Qaeda in charge in that country. And that is in McClatchy News, AP, LA Times, you name it. Uh, all admitting that our government runs al-Qaeda, and so now they, they're not going to hide it. They're just like, al-Qaeda's good. So next time the TSA wants to go in your wife's pants, just say, uh, what do you think the government's al-Qaeda is in there, or are you just some pervert? Because it's all about being dominated by these people. And we've got that report coming up in Chicago where they shoot the guy's dog for no reason, and the cops show up while the media's there and say, you're not allowed to talk to the media. I mean, that's North Korea. <laughs> you want to live in North Korea? There it is. They want you under their thumb. It's very sad. Uh, Mike in Oregon, you are on the air, listening via free 
Android app. Welcome, Mike. How you doing, Alex? I'm doing good, brother. What's on your mind today after all the topics we've covered? Uh, well, I'm kind of still upset about the Costas and Whitlock remarks, and I actually got a comment for the both of them. Uh, along for Mr. Costas, uh, 2009, July 4th, Mr. Steve McNair, good quarterback, he was uh, killed in his sleep or shot by some, I think it was like his ex-wife or something, but uh, if he had, had a gun, he probably would still be alive today. But another long following up this other comment about uh, a room of 20, 25-year-old steroid addicts all pumped up having handguns. What about the... 40,000 18 to 21-year-olds in Afghanistan under hangers that are just brainwashed into killing people. Well, that is the issue. They Listen, the average person gets in the military at about 20. The average service is about five years. You can look this up. And I was thinking that this morning. Casas is saying you can't trust 20 to 30-year-olds with guns. He said that. I played the clip twice if you, if you just tuned in. Uh, the clip's up at Infowars.com. You want to go watch it. Uh, and, you know, the full clip of Costas, and, and he came out and said, I don't apologize. In fact, people shouldn't even have guns if they're 20 to 30 years of age, uh, period. Uh, and so Wall Street Journal says that uh, he refuses to apologize and throws it in everybody's face. So Costas, uh, here it is, Bob Costas won't back down from anti-gun remarks. Uh, that's Wall Street Journal. And uh, it, it, it shows that he wants your guns. And... Uh, if there are bad 20-year-olds out there, I need my gun to protect myself. But there's this idea that we can only trust the government. What about all the steroid cops out there? Some police departments admit their police are on steroids, uh, like in Fort Worth. Um, it's been in the news where their chief has said steroids is good for, the, for them. And, uh, you know, I understand with the bisphenol A and the feminizing hormones they put in the food and water on purpose and... The globalists brag about how they do that, by the way. That's not my opinion. Uh, that uh, may be moderate for some of those guys. If they are sissified, I could see putting them on it uh, a little bit. But, uh, I mean, I couldn't imagine having extra testosterone. Uh, I've got plenty, so my hair is falling out. Uh, but the point is, well, I'm just ranting about this. What about all the roided up soldiers coming back and cops and all the rest of it? And the answer is, well... The government says those that don't join them are terrorists, and those that do join them are above the law and godlike, and in Chicago tell people, well, we shot your dog, you can't talk to the media, we're God. Anything else, sir? Yeah, statistically, cops uh, kill way more people than the average citizen, along with their own fellow cops, along with their little drug raids, they go and shoot one of their fellow cops, then they blame it on the guy they just mowed down. By the way, that does happen a lot. That's been confirmed. I appreciate your call. There are a lot of good police departments out there overall, uh, but there are a lot of bad ones, and they're getting worse, and we need to rein it in. But the globalists want a bunch of people that will follow orders. They want authoritarian thugs, and that's where we're going in this country, and it's not good for anybody. Uh, let's talk to uh, Braun in Alabama. Let's talk about the NFL. And for those that don't know, the sports writer at – Fox, who, that Costa said he agreed with and quoted, he says gun ownership is racist and all gun owners are Ku Klux Klan members. Uh, the NRA uh, is Ku Klux Klan. I played the clip yesterday. And the uh, people on the show with him agree. Uh, even though the Ku Klux Klan is on record getting the South to pass gun, gun restrictions, the first gun laws after the Civil War, so blacks couldn't defend themselves, uh, so they could go burn down their houses and kill them and lynch them. And they kept blacks from getting guns and they killed them. So... So the, he takes the truth and literally inverts it on its head, and the media praises him. Uh, so there's that's that's news core for you. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, go ahead, uh, Bron. Uh, you're, I mean, you're totally right. That speaks to the whole disconnect. But uh, you know, that, that's exactly why I called because I I, I had a suggestion uh, for you because you could really maximize your Twitter following just by doing a few more things. Um, basically, I think that it, you know, it, especially if you tweeted directly at you know, people like that, Jason Whitlock and, you know, Bob Costas, if you use Twitter often enough. But, I agree. You know, I don't know like how that. Twitter works, and I've got some of the crew using it who knows something, uh, but oh, most of it's me, or I tell them to do something, and then it's not their fault. I don't give them enough directions, and some stuff goes out that I don't agree with. I need to get to, to take more control of the Twitter. If you see stuff at night or on the weekend, it's me. During the week, I say, hey, tweet this out, and it goes out. Then they overall do a pretty good job. But you're right. I see that. We need to tweet at 
at the people attacking them, baiting them in. We need to get people to follow us. We need to, because uh, Twitter is one area where we used to have like seven or eight accounts and we combined them. It was like 600,000 people. Our biggest one only has 120,000. And uh, then we'll kind of promote little things we're doing, but not the big things. And it's my fault. I'm not directing uh, the, the one lady that works here and kind of works on planetinfowars.com and does a great job moderating some of the stuff and also uh, with the uh, real Alex Jones on Twitter. So tell me how I maximize my uh, tweeting, sir. Well, you, you know, I, I run that WTFROI.com site. You, you retweeted a lot of stuff uh, that David Amber Lyon was on. And, you know, just little things like that, you know, little quotes and uh, very specific things that are relevant to exactly what you, you know, need to convey at that point. J just by putting that out there on Twitter, so many people come across that because Twitter is a, is a completely, uh, you know, it sprawls in so many different directions. And, and just just the searchability of that and, and the SEO would, would really, uh, you know, help spread it in completely new directions for people that don't even, have never heard of you. Well, we also, and they've been doing that, we need to have the graphics department with simple political statements send out images. Uh, we need to do that more on Facebook. Facebook makes you pay now if you're big to send it out to people so, you know, we have millions so we can't even really use it. It's all about Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. We need you guys to help us. Uh, because, you know, I can be seen by hundreds of millions uh, on YouTube. I can be all over national TV shows. I can be on 140 AM and FM stations. I can be on XM. The list goes on and on. But we need to get that Twitter up to a million people. And it's um, twitter.com forward slash real Alex Jones. And I guess we need to create a at Alex Jones Twitter somehow because I've been told that by everybody. Uh, so you're right. Uh, any other points, sir? Well, basically, one way I think you could really do it is by tweeting at a specific group of people, multiple of them at one time with one specific article in the headline. And you never know, uh, you know, if they read it, they might actually discuss it with uh, some of the uh, friends. You know, they were actually... No, no, I agree. Stuff. Sometimes if I send, uh, like, like Dave Mustaine this morning was just asking me if I'm getting feedback from him tweeting us to his millions of people and... And I'm just so busy, I don't even have time. We need to be tweeting to Dave Mustaine, Billy Corrigan. We need to be tweeting to, uh, uh, you know, people like Joe Perry of Aerosmith. We need to be tweeting to Charlie Sheen. I've never even tried to get him to send out a tweet for me. He's got 8 million. It's, I, I just don't think about it. I need to, uh, I mean, I use it and like it. I just don't think about making it big. I'm starting to do that now. Uh, I, I need to get uh, Mancow to tweet stuff for me. I need to get uh, Joe Rogan, to, you know, to tweet to him. We've tweeted before and he's tweeted us. Uh, so, yeah, we need to really do it that way. And you're absolutely right. More, more golden ideas, sir. Tell me. Basically, the, the last thing that I think is, is, is you take all that and you start tweeting at people, like I said, in groups of three, four, five people at a time, these celebrities, and those get retweeted so many times just by their followers. And, that, you know, that's how you can start really spreading it. That and, you know, a couple of hats. I agree. Here. We're going to send a tweet, but I, I need to write this, something like uh, Bob Costas why are you lying to people about guns? And then send it to him, to NBC Sports, to a bunch of others, and then attach to it an article we're doing. Bob Costas, why are you lying and saying athletes uh, don't protect themselves with guns or something like that? And, and, and then get people to notice that he's lying about this. That's a great idea. Right, so, so the, the, the last thing is that, uh, you know, I, I also uh, you know, usually quote you, uh, you know, a couple of times a day. I, I put one out there today about the KKK article, and I think that, you know, if you start tweeting certain things and then you put those in your articles, you can embed it so that it's, you know, rich content and, and it takes you directly to that person's account or it takes you to your account so that they can follow you right there. You know, just, just putting it in front of people's face right then and there will at least make it however much more likely for them to click it you know, to follow you and, and spread that information that way. No, you're right. And we need to go after these uh, celebrities that are promoting, promoting Satanism and, you know, pushing all sorts of stuff and, and, and get people debating what they're saying, what they're doing. Because uh, I'm, I'm the master of being able to put out a YouTube video on a news piece and have a you know, million views of it when other people can't get that done. I need to be able to dominate this Twitter thing because that's the new email. And, and I know that. And people can go to infowars.com forward slash newsletter and they can sign up there on the site, uh, and they can uh, then get the free magazine, the digital version. They can get key alerts and things. Uh, but people sign up for it. We use a big establishment email system to make sure there's no spam. And 
they'll be lazy and they'll hit the spam button to delete my email instead of delete and then and then you know it causes this problem so just, I got to get away from this email thing because I try to give people a free magazine they sign up for it and they're like I don't want your free magazine you know it's <laughs> we're going to send the magazine back out today for people that missed it though infowars.com forward slash newsletter so sign up there for the free magazine and more we'll be back with more calls stay with us Coming up in the next segment, I'll get to that uh, situation in Chicago with the dog getting shot. And, and that's one issue. Then the cops saying, don't talk to the media. I mean, <laughs> North Korea, man. North Korea. Um, had it happen to one of my reporters last week. Don't, don't take photos of the federal building. We'll take you to jail. It's illegal. I went down there yesterday and said, you know it's not illegal. And I went in there and confronted them. People are like, man, you're crazy. They'll come get you. Fine. I'm not a narcotics trafficking New World Order. I'm a good guy, man, and I'm, I know tyranny when I see it, and we need to get government back under control. Now, that's what America's all about, not where it's going. Well, in Texas, says school districts are spying. Oh, yeah, they, and they openly have the 6th and 7th graders spy on their parents. They, they've got cameras in the bathrooms now. The Defense Department runs them. I mean, this country's far gone. Uh, Will, tell us what you discovered. Come ahead, Will. You're on the air worldwide right now. Yes, hello. Good evening, Alex. Good. Uh, go ahead and tell us what's happening, sir. Well, uh, here in Houston, there are, uh, let's just say they federalized the school, the schools, as well as the teachers. Now, uh, a few months ago, you had a special showing how the, um, the police and others were giving kids, you know, young adults, drugs, drugs of their choice in exchange for spying. Well, they're doing the exact same thing with the teachers. And by the way, people, uh, I've got to hear this, people didn't believe it when a major capital reporter in Minneapolis, St. Paul, who's broken big stories, broke it here. And then a month later, or, or three weeks later, the governor, all of them, it came out, the state police were running it. Yes, they run the drugs in most cities. Unbelievable. Tell us what else happened. Tell us. Well, to make a long story short, and I would like to give you guys my information later to where we sure. can talk more because it's it's one of those things I'd have to explain all of it for any of it to make sense. But I've been approached by FBI, by Homeland Security, and by CIA. The later of which was a gentleman from the CIA about a month ago just literally showed up at my house and, and told me that they were going to make my life a living hell. Okay, so you now, discovered they're putting the kids on not just their Ritalin and Prozac, but on their schmack and Coke and the rest of it. Is that what happened? No, no, no. What I've discovered is that they are putting the teachers themselves. They are giving the teachers cocaine. They are giving the teachers marijuana in, in exchange for spying. The teachers are, themselves are spying on people. It's not just the kids anymore with the computers. They're using the teachers. No, I know. Now. You know, actually, this goes on. Uh, I mean, the biggest drug pushers. Uh, funny, people are always trying to make connections to me and the CIA and saying I'm government instead of judging, you know, the, the fruits of the tree. There's no way I'm globalist. I mean, it's a miracle I'm alive. But then, I, but then they always ignore where I admit I've had family that was in the CIA and who got out because they were to told exact stuff like you're saying, and they wouldn't do it. I mean, they would do some hardcore stuff overseas because they thought they were fighting communists, but they brought them back here to, to do incredible stuff. In fact, with one family member, it was, uh, it was deal drugs and kill people in Chicago. Uh, army officer who they wanted to sheep dip, and he was older too, and he wouldn't do it. But I mean, it's just so incredible. I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, it, it, in particular, what I would like to do is, is give you guys uh, the, the hard facts, but, but that's something I'm going to have to do shortly at another time. Well, just give but, us a ball uh, down. Sorry, What's going on? How, how did you discover this? Well, well basically, uh, on Facebook, this woman just out of the blue uh, sent me a message. And, I mean, she's a drop-dead gorgeous woman. And... So, you know, we talked on uh, through Facebook for about a week and a half. Sure, they use sex and operatives. We, so, yeah, oh, ahead. man. And check this out. She, was, she worked about two blocks down the street from my house. 
Coincidence? I think not. Now, the strange thing is that uh, there were times when I would pray about these matters, and I would ask my subconscious to give me a sign whether or not this woman was a spy. And one time she called me from school, and the phones actually start to gain this interference. And I could actually hear one of her supervisors, probably from some type of fusion center, talking to her and telling her what to ask me. And she started to pick up on the fact that the, the lines were getting crossed or something to that effect, and she hung up, but not before I could actually hear what these people were saying. Now, now get this, the first night that we, that we met, we met the day before I was to do a radio interview talking about specific technology that has been weaponized, technology that uh, Richard Hoagland has alluded to. Oh, hold on. Show. It's probably because of where you work, but, yeah, I know, Houston is famously corrupt. Police execute people there in public. That has got to be one of the smoothest jazz riffs. That's jazz, isn't it? I just know what kind of music I like that... That I've ever heard. I just, I can never hear this enough. Jazz pianist Dave Brubeck, dead at age 91. Dave Brubeck, a jazz musician who attained pop star acclaim with recordings like Take Five, that's this, and Blue Rondo a la Turk, died Wednesday morning at Norwalk Hospital in Norwalk, Connecticut. Said his longtime manager, producer, conductor, Russell Gloyd. Brubeck was one day short of his 92nd birthday. He died of heart failure en route, a regular treatment with his cardiologist, said his manager. Well, hey, that's a life fully lived and put out some beautiful stuff, a great example of the power and the um, good side of humanity that we all need to try to reach for. So happy trails, buddy. Chris, uh, Alan, he's recommended we do that and did that liner. I, I think that's a nice little touch on the show instead of me just ranting and raving here. Uh I want to run through these calls, and I've got two reports I've got to get to, along with a bunch of other news. we got to move quick here. Uh, and we do have the big Joe Rogan, best interview I've ever done with him. Usually he's live. Usually Joey Diaz is here yelling and screaming. So who is a great character? But this is an in-depth interview with Joe Rogan on a host of issues. We're going to air it, uh, excerpts tomorrow on the radio, and we are going to air the whole thing, um, basically unedited. Um, very little editing uh, on the nightly news tomorrow night. And tonight, prisonplanet.tv, infowarsnews.com. I'm, I'm going to call it, you know, uh, basically a film because that's what it is. Ron Paul's speech augmented, upgraded with incredible videos, documentation, his farewell address, proof and documentation of everything he's saying. We're going to premiere that tonight, InfoWars Nightly News. And now is the time to go pay $5.95 for a monthly trial membership, and you get 10 memberships for $5.95, 59 cents a month. One username and passcode can be used by 10 people simultaneously. So create an e-card or just an email and say, hey, I gave you a free membership to uh, prisonplanet.tv. And they'll say, what's that? And they'll go, it's, it's incredible information, documentary films, nightly news show, video of Alex Jones's radio show. Uh, digital copy of the magazine each month. Um, I mean, it's 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 really first rate. We've really upgraded the site. Almost 10 years in operation, 17 years of material. PrisonPlanet.tv tonight. Uh, the Ron Paul film. I don't know what to call it yet, so I've got to go name it right after the show here. And then I've got to interview Lindsey Williams. I'm going to just sit back for like 45 minutes and let him talk, uh, and just go through all the new data he's got. So that's uh, tonight on InfoWars Nightly News. So the woods are lovely, dark, and deep, but I have miles to go before I sleep. I, I know I've been talking about this over and over again, but you know, you heard the caller call in, and I, I don't know if he's telling the truth or not. He sounds legitimate, but I, but I remember when a prestigious, you know, I mean, a reporter who's broken a lot of big news stories got video with his undercover team of the police going and getting Occupy Wall Street demonstrators and offering them cocaine, heroin, marijuana, alcohol, whatever they wanted to go stir up trouble and delivering them back with drugs bombed out of their brain. And it's like flashbacks. It makes me sick when I wasn't using drugs in high school. Uh, you know, I I'd, I'd tried a few. I'd, I'd smoke marijuana. It made me feel like I was run over by a truck and did, you know, didn't really like it. Tried a few other things. Nothing floated my boat but chewing tobacco and, uh, and beer. And then I watched cops deal drugs 
in Rockwall, Texas, and later the sheriff went to jail for it, flying in a bunch of stuff into the airport, and, and other police got caught selling drugs too. The, the department itself, not just the sheriff's department. And, you know, there'd be cops in there and, and, and getting in lockers and drug dogs, and the cops would pull me over when I was riding with friends when I was like 14, 15. And, uh, you know, we're going to search your car and blah, 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 and watch your mouth. And I'd be like, you know, I... One of my friend's older brothers buys drugs from you. Because I knew people that dealt drugs in, in the uh, rich, richest county in Texas. is a bedroom community of Dallas. So I just grew up water skiing with people and stuff where a cop car would even pull up and sell them drugs. And all I knew is the, I'm like 13 and the girls are 18 dancing around on ecstasy. And I'm out there hanging out with the cool old kids. I just thought, you know, and I just saw cops dealing drugs. Oh, the police have pulled up. Let's get the drugs from them. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no drugs for me, you know. I'd be over it, you know, with, with my older friends. They'd go by and sell drugs to some, you know, 25-year-old trophy wife. And, you know, my 18-year-old buddy go back in the bedroom with her for 10 minutes, come out laughing. Hey, let's go, Alex. Jump on the back of the motorcycle, you know. I mean, I had a lot of fun. I thought it was a lot of fun. I, again, I wasn't into the drugs. I saw it. See, I'm ranting here. It's why I can never go to calls. It, it, it's just <laughs> the government deals the drugs, ladies and gentlemen. Stop being naive. It's a way to pack their presence. And you think 7 million people in prison? It's 4.5 million currently in it, but 7 million each year in and out. They're getting ready to double that. They're going to put everybody in jail. They're going to put you in jail for dog poop in your yard. That's, that's mainstream news. Guys, type in um, six years in prison, $100,000 fine. It's uh, San Diego Herald Tribune um, for uh, washing your car. I, I just You've got to wake up or it's all over. Okay, I'm ranting. Sir, real quick, finish your story. We'll get your number. We'll give you our email. If you can send us some documentation. If you do have bombshell info, they're going to kill you if you don't go public with it all soon. That's the type of people that get killed or get set up if what you're saying is true. And, you know, we proved that up in uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul. The, the police had a giant program drugging everybody and selling the drugs because they're drug dealers. And they need to prime the pump. They need to get new customers. That's what drug dealers do. I mean, they push Prozac, Ritalin, and deadly vaccines on your kids. And I'm not saying all departments do this, but Dallas, Texas, they've caught the, the entire detective force dealing drugs or, and, and framing people to take their property. They've caught the Houston police doing it in a fake crime lab. They've caught Chicago, New York, L.A., San Francisco, uh, Tulia, Texas, Little, I mean, just every town. I, 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 almost every town, okay? And, and You've always got the goody two-shoe cop who wonders why he's been on the force 20 years and never moves up. Because you're a joke to them. They're drug dealers. Okay? I mean, I don't know how to explain it to you. But cops pull you over and say, got any drugs in the car? And I'm like, you sell drugs. Leave me alone. And boy, once I started talking about it, oh, we're going to kill you. Oh, we're going to... They would pull me over and just once I was 16 and would say, you are drinking and when i wasn't we're taking you to jail you or, or we'd pull up at a bonfire I, I wasn't even drinking i'd just gotten there okay uh you're being disorderly jones we're taking you to jail and then again through a lawyer we were told you know they kill people in rock wall and they told us a few people they'd hung in the jail and they said your son's going to be hung in the jail and my dad sold his dental offices when we moved to austin texas so that's why i hear this stuff it really upsets me because, because your naivete, America, is going to let total evil take over. Because it's not enough the government deals drugs. They deal little kids, too. You think Penn State's anything? That's normal in, the, in, in these circles of the elite, okay? Do you understand that? Now, let's go back briefly to Will in Texas. Go ahead, Will. Yeah, and, you know, like I said, it, it sounds strange, but, but two things. First of all, I'm a reverend here in Houston. Oh, Second that doesn't sound strange. COINTELPRO spies on all pastors. Uh, even if they work for the system, they've got operatives. Of course they wanted to get you up with a sex operative so they could blackmail you and fully control you and have you uh, go under clergy response. They were just trying to get you as an operative. I'm sorry. Worst. It gets worse. The first night I, I met her, and remember, she pushed the issue before my radio interview. The first night I met her, she got naked in a car, in her car, in the AHA parking lot. The first night. Well, yeah, the government runs the, the, sir, the, the government runs the hookers, the escorts most times. I know. Yeah. I know. And, and believe me, man, they've even landed a black helicopter on top of my house. 
Well, listen, we th listen. You, you, if what you're saying is true and you sound like you're telling the truth, you're in a lot of danger. You need to send us an email with all the information now, the names, everything. And they do spy on everything we do, so just understand that. But you need to understand that you need to go public with this or they'll kill you. And, 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 and if you do go public, they'll leave you alone. Okay, uh, put him on hold, get his name and number, and we'll try to help him if he can. Yeah, that's, that's mo most of these big city preachers have got a string of hookers running them and uh, sex operatives, and uh, they've got a lot of the pastors running the drugs for them. They, I mean, they've got to have the pastor stand down when the government's snatching kids out of the congregation. <laughs> People are so naive. Uh, Michael, no, we don't have time to go to calls yet. And I'm going to have to skip this network break. I've got to quit doing this. I'm so out of control. <sighs> this is our little satire piece. It's up at prisonplanet.com and infowars.com. Please help us get it out to everybody. It's in the featured news section. Breaking bin Laden raid footage released by White House satire report. And it's got like a cartoon part because you're going to hear the audio where it shows a cartoon with bin Laden's head on it with predator drones dropping bombs on him. It's really funny. Uh, but then it goes into all the documentation that the bin Laden raid was fake. It's all a fraud. And we should rename the, the new film to Zero Dark Easter Bunny. Here is that report with Melissa Melton and Jakari Jackson. I'm Melissa Melton reporting for InfoWars Nightly News. Zero Dark Thirty, the film supposedly based on the true story official accounts of the killing of Osama bin Laden, is set to release in U.S. theaters December 19th. We are still no closer to defeating our enemy. 20 detainees recognize that photo. In analyzing the clip you just saw, Jessica Chastain stars as CIA operative Maya, a woman obsessed with capturing the man supposedly behind the September 11th terrorist attacks. The New York Film Critics Guide was apparently so moved, they named Zero Dark Thirty Film of the Year. Now let's analyze a clip of actual Osama bin Laden raid footage. Infowars.com has acquired this official White House approved raid footage. So we bring to you now the world premiere of the Osama bin Laden raid. That's one of those old 1920s cartoons. By the way, Zero Dark 30, I've seen the trailer. It looks like a made for TV movie. Uh, low budget. Produced this whole thing themselves. They already tell people what to do, but now they want to run it and be the movie stars themselves. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Actually, we can't be sure if that's legitimate footage or not. You see, so much misinfo and disinfo came out in the wake of the raid that it's really hard to understand what's real or what's not anymore. And really, shouldn't the makers of Zero Dark Thirty be concerned about the same thing? If you'll recall, Osama bin Laden was supposedly taken down in a raid at a compound in Abbottabad in 2011. The death of bin Laden marks the most significant achievement to date in our nation's effort to defeat al-Qaeda. President Obama addressed the nation late Sunday evening to say that just hours before Osama bin Laden had been killed in the middle of a major populated city in a palace compound. My friends, this is a complete and total hoax and we predicted with total precision with inside sources going back more than eight years ago exactly what would happen. And then bin Laden's body was buried at sea, all within 24 hours after the raid. Our government claimed his burial was per Islamic tradition, but many Muslim scholars have come forward to point out that this, like so much else in the official story, is false. Over the years, many people, from intelligence analysts to heads of state, including former Secretary of State Madeleine Albright, former Pakistani Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto, and former FBI Head of Counterterrorism Dale Watson, have gone on record to say that bin Laden died in 2001. Dr. Steve Pachinik, who has worked with five different U.S. presidents and the Department of Defense, has even come out to say that Osama bin Laden died in 2001 of Marfan syndrome, a degenerative genetic disease with no permanent cure. With the intel, uh, with the CIA reports you were reading, with, with as much proof as you can give us without giving up your sources of knowing that bin Laden was dead uh, and when he uh, reportedly died so that we can look at the big news story now in context of why they've launched this, this hoax today. Well, let me just say, uh, uh, the, the issue of why he was uh, dead it was exactly what I said before. He died of Marfan syndrome. Uh, Bush Jr. knew about it. The intelligence community knew about it. He had El Zwahiri, who was a physician with him, who is still a physician. I don't know where he is. But we knew he was already dead by 9-11. In fact, 
Two separate high-level sources have told Alex Jones directly that not only was bin Laden dead since 2001, but his death would not be announced until the most politically opportune moment. This all came out right at the time that Obama's approval rating was dropping like a rock, an all-time low this far into a president's administration, as the dollar's dropping, as support for Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, and uh, the uh, drone attacks in Pakistan was imploding, right as the Pakistanis were threatening to kick the U.S. out of Pakistan and to kick their drones out. Right as this happens, there's this big propaganda victory, and what do they do? They take the body and throw it in the ocean, they say. Do you really believe that? No one is buying that. When the announcement finally came that Osama bin Laden was dead, the White House changed its story so many times, it was hard to keep anything straight. First, the raid involved a 40-minute shootout. Then there was no shootout. Then only one unnamed man was armed. Then bin Laden was armed. Then he wasn't armed, and it was reported that he used his wife as a human shield. To go along with the ever-changing official story, the White House also released a Situation Room photo depicting a grave President Obama and Hillary Clinton with her hand over her mouth, supposedly watching the bin Laden raid live. But CIA Director Leon Panetta later admitted that wasn't possible, as the live feed had been cut before the Navy SEAL team even went in. Speaking of the Navy SEALs that carried out the raid, controversy intensified when our government announced that some members of SEAL Team 6 responsible for the raid died in a helicopter crash two months later. I have two sources inside the Army, and I have another source inside the Marines, a colonel, who have confirmed and talked to members of the family of SEAL Team 6 that supposedly was shot down a few days ago over Kabul, Afghanistan, that they were killed to shut them up about what they know about the staged raid on Osama bin Laden's compound. In the wake of the raid, Disney even tried to copyright the name Navy SEAL Team 6. The Situation Room photo wasn't the only photo proven a fraud, either. A photograph the media pounced all over in the days following the raid, reportedly of bin Laden's body, was also shown to be a manipulated fake. Multiple books were also released following the raid. The latest one published by a Navy SEAL who claimed his work was a first-hand, boots-on-the-ground account and that he witnessed bin Laden's death with his own eyes. The publisher even claimed the book was not vetted by the Pentagon. But as we witnessed with the arrest and detainment of Brandon Robb, release of an unapproved book of this magnitude would garner a full-scale assault on its author. So let's recap. Ten years later, and the greatest manhunt in history, as the movie puts it, and we finally caught and killed the man responsible for one of the greatest crimes ever committed on U.S. soil, and yet we have no valid photographs and no conclusive proof. If you want a conspiracy theory to exist, that's how you start it. <laughs> like, the most elusive character on the face of the planet, the most elusive human being, the Bigfoot of people. And you catch him and kill him, but yeah, we, we chucked him in the drink right away because we didn't want any more problems. The latest news to break on the bin Laden raid came a few weeks ago when heavily redacted emails obtained through an Associated Press FOIA request revealed that no American sailors aboard the USS Carl Vinton had witnessed bin Laden's sea burial. Another email from the public affairs officer claimed that only a small group of the ship's leadership were even informed of the burial. Though the release of Zero Dark Thirty was delayed until after the presidential election, supposedly to ward off accusations of a political agenda, with a mountain of evidence showing we've never been given the full story here, it's hard to think this movie has anything but a political agenda. So much propaganda was released following the bin Laden raid, it's unclear what really happened. But saying this movie is based on a true story is a lot like saying Winnie the Pooh is based on a real-life bear named Winifred and a real-life little boy named Christopher Robin. And yet, I've never seen one talking tiger in real life. For InfoWars Nightly News, I'm Melissa Melton. All right, great job, Melissa. You know, it's even worse than what she says, though. And, and, and that's what happens every time I do a report. It's always much worse than what we could even add to it. That's what's so terrible about it. People think I exaggerate. Most of the time, it's, it's not exaggeration. It's, it's that I'm underestimating. Because the White House is on record being involved in giving classified information, classified baloney, advisors, the Pentagon. The, 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 this is the most integrated film 
ever into Hollywood production. Um, and you've got the folks that put out uh, Hurt Locker and stuff. That, that That's kind of the new mode where they don't just give them the script and pay them. I mean, it's on record. They're, what's the number I saw? A couple billion just for films in 2012 and 2008 of taxpayer money to promote socialist health care. So when you're watching movies and wonder why they promote government-run health care and Obamacare by name, your tax money paid. That's like North Korea, but they're not that slick where... Nazi Germany did that with films. Hitler was a master and Joseph Goebbels of having the films push the regime. Product placement, propaganda placement, they call it behavior placement. I coined the term propaganda placement 15 years ago when there was no term. And you added all the rest, it's over 10 billion a year that we know about for paying the media. It's one of the biggest secrets. A lot of big talk stations uh, on radio and TV have sponsored news, and you're never told that. We don't have sponsored news. Sometimes we have sponsors on occasionally, pretty much rarely, but you know, where they have some info we want, and it's, it's like 90% of it's not an infomercial, but there is some of that in it. We don't do infomercials for more than a few minutes. All radio does that, but you know, when you hear like an hour and it's a sponsor, it's because they're an interesting person, and then they're a little bit about their thing at the end. But we're transparent about that. It's obvious. I'll always say this is our sponsor. Uh, they'll announce when News Corps reports on a Fox you know, story or something, or when Fox reports on that, they'll tell people that we're reporting on our parent company. But when the government is involved paying off radio hosts, TV hosts, it's all come out. Just unbelievable amounts of money. And they were keeping it secret. Remember when it came out with Bush paying half a million to this guy, 240-something thousand to that guy, but, but the media only focused on personalities being paid. Let's shift gears. Uh, we've been trying to feature stories here where police do the right thing, where cops, you know, buy a guy a pair of shoes and it's not a PR stunt, or where, because we know it's not a PR stunt with the case in Albany, New York, with our reporters going up there, our auxiliary reporter, Jason Burmis, and they tell, you know, the cop to throw him out, and he goes, well, he's not interfering. Well, give me his license. Well, I can if he isn't doing something wrong. Uh, well, and, and by the way, that police officer did not get reprimanded. He got commended by that sheriff's department. That sounds like a pretty good sheriff's department. I mean, look, just don't treat law-abiding citizens like scum and tell us we're in North Korea and can't do stuff when you're not interfering. Sure, you can't go back in the checkpoint and get into what they're doing, but you can be back there filming. They're filming you. Uh, so we try, and we're looking for good things police are doing, okay, because we want to model good behavior and not just be one-sided bashing police here because that compacts cops more into their gang culture. But I've seen countless videos, and I've done reports on this before, going to people's houses where cops bust in in a no-knock raid for marijuana or whatever and didn't find it in one case I covered. The lab is in the kitchen, chained up so he doesn't go out the dog door, doesn't even bark, and they just kill it. And let me tell you, that creeps me out that if they ever SWAT team me for something made up or do one of those uh, you know, things where they... Somebody calls in, you know, spoofs your number as, as making a 911 call, a felony call, you know, a hostage call or something, and they're going to kill my chihuahua. They'll kill my French bulldogs. I know they'll kill French bulldogs because they look scary. But, I mean, that's a joke, but it's not. People on hike and bike trail, you know, they weigh like 25, 30 pounds. Oh, they just see a bulldog. And, and this was a bull terrier, really sweet dog. It did live. It's out of the vet. Just the police admit the dog walked out behind the guy when they were giving him a ticket. And when they shot his dog, they still gave him the ticket in Chicago. But here's the big story. Now, and this is uh, a Fox piece we're about to play a clip of here. Now the police came to try to intimidate the owner. Uh, here's a clip of that right now. He was covered in blood and he said, the cop shot the dog. A Fox 32 exclusive tonight. A Northside family furious over what they claim was an unjustified police shooting. Good evening, everyone. I'm Robin Robinson. And I'm Bob Surratt. The shooting happened Saturday in a quiet residential neighborhood. The dog was off the leash, but its owners say it never posed a threat. Now the owners say they are getting heat from police for telling us their story. Fox 32's Larry Yellen. Unbelievable. With exclusive details tonight, Larry. Bob and Robin, residents of the Northside Buena Park neighborhood are still upset tonight, not just because police shot the puppy they all knew as the Colonel, but also because the shooting occurred not far from a preschool on a street where pedestrians, including children, could have been hurt. Meet Colonel Phillips, a seven-month-old miniature bull terrier whose father was a champion show dog and whose owners hoped one day would be a show dog himself. They look like um, Spuds McKenzie. 
You see in a Target ad, one of those. But they're miniatures. But on Saturday afternoon, the colonel became a target himself. Look at that pink he belly. He was shot by a Chicago police officer in front of his owner's gated north side home. Gated. Police were writing a parking ticket for a van belonging to Al Phillips, the dog's owner. So Phillips came out to move the vehicle. My little uh, bull terrier followed me out. Then in all of his boom, boom, two shots. I said, you shot the dog. One eyewitness, Charlene DeZagel, told us she heard the officer warn Phillips about the dog being loose, but the officer never sounded like he was in danger. All of a sudden, I heard him say, get your dog, and then the next statement was, get your dog, and then he just pulled out his gun and shot twice. Morgan Phillips, Al's daughter, rushed the dog to an emergency vet. He needed a five-hour surgery. Um, they took shrapnel out of his stomach. He had a um, shell casing in his leg. It lacerated the muscle. We were going to show him, but we can't now. While I interviewed the dog's owners, I saw two police officers drive by. Ninety minutes later, they were back, asking Phillips why he had contacted the media, and then giving Phillips a ticket for not keeping the colonel on a leash. Unbelievable. Oh, that's ticket. enough. Folks, this is, the, this is the mafia thugism. Hey, bud. Hey, Mac, why'd you call the media when we killed your dog? You're not just getting a ticket for the car. You're getting a ticket now for the dog off a leash. You understand that, you little American? We own you! We're... Ladies and gentlemen, it is Wednesday, the 5th day of December 2012, and we are live. It's 2 o'clock Central Standard Time and 7 seconds. I want to show you what's up at DrugsReport.com. There's a bunch of news I haven't gotten to yet that I needed to cover. Now, this is the latest stuff. We're also covering it over at PrisonPlanet.com. Obama says you're going to vote to give me control over debt r r rise limits, and you're going to you're going to triple the taxes, basically. Uh, you know, 3.8% on all your investments, giant increases on the middle class, and quote the wealthy. All these new taxes. He says he's not playing games. I will not play a game. Quote. And he just says, fiscal cliff talks, he's going to push it over, let government shut down, hold everybody hostage. Just like Europe, you're going to give all your money to foreign banks. And the Republicans have come saying, we'll tax investments, we'll tax everything, we'll give you giant $900 billion tax increases on the middle class. And he's like, that's not enough, I rule. It's like the cops in Chicago are like, you don't, we shot your dog for no reason, here's a ticket for it. You don't talk to the media, scum. What do you think this is, America, you filth? You scum! Continuing, New York City hit Sandy victims with failure to maintain property citations. You gotta love that. Their houses are collapsing, falling apart, still no power in many areas. And the code enforcers go, sorry, not allowed to have holes in your roof, not allowed to have garbage in your yard. And you're like, I have no power, I'm destitute, my job, I've lost everything. Ha ha ha, we're gonna take your property, scum! Once you catch $2,000 a day fines, yes! You government, nothing will stop us, nothing will stop us. Everything is ours now. Oh, it's so good. Oh, and in Chicago land, Godfather orders mourners to be searched and patted down at funerals. Oh, the TSA must be everywhere. No one can be trusted. I saw this video days ago. RT covered it. It's gotten gone super viral. NSA, everyone is under surveillance in the United States. Oh, it's so much fun. It's so wonderful. Just total tyranny, absolutely running rampant everywhere. Oh, but everything's fine. The government loves you. And then there's also mainstream news admitting up at Infowars.com the government runs Al Qaeda. Aircraft carrier task force ready to back up Al Qaeda and bring them in. So it's all happening. And Glenn Beck, Vince Vaughn to launch reality TV show. So uh, there you go. Um, uh, that is uh, very, very good. So we have stuff like that. That's exactly, I've been offered so many reality TV shows. I'm not in competition with Glenn Beck, but I mean, it's just uh, any reality TV show that's controlled by mainstream media will will make you look bad. I mean, there is, and take you out of context, there is no doubt. Uh, so that's just some of the news up there. Going over to Infowars.com, we have a lot of uh, breaking news on that site that it's uh, very important for everybody to go check out. You guys punch up Infowars.com uh, for me uh, up on screen there, and I will uh, show the viewers uh, that. A neocon WMD argument recycled for Syria. Now they're saying they've got WMDs. Yep. Yeah. Well, they battle 
to take our liberties. With Al Qaeda, they run. DARPA sponsored company unveils drones to fly through your windows. Sheriff's crowd control spy drums suspended after privacy uproar in the U.S. Bureaucrat says it's wrong to uh, advise citizens to arm themselves after saying they should arm themselves. Syrian rebels, when we finish with Assad, will fight the U.S. And the globalists are fighting the U.S. as well. That's why they run Al-Qaeda. They'll use Al-Qaeda to take our liberties. That's how it works. Breaking bin Laden raid footage released by White House. Satire report. Got to see that video. Just premiered that. And doctor says genetically modified wheat, the perfect chronic poison. Yes. So that is just some of what is up on PrisonPlanet.com and InfoWars.com. And all I can say is tonight... 7 o'clock, you uh, InfoWars Nightly News, PrisonPlanet.tv. You do not want to miss the premiere of this new Ron Paul film. And that's what it is. It's a film. It's over an hour long. It is powerful. We produced it uh, with, uh, with his speech and concert part of it. That is all coming up. Don't forget, you can also get the word out about the gun grab that's coming, buying the magazines at cost at InfoWars.com. We pulled even more back from distribution to be able to have them. They'll probably be gone by tomorrow, if not sooner. So InfoWarsShop.com. And we have ProPure Water Filtration, stainless steel systems, the best out there. Side-by-side -side comparisons at InfoWarsStore.com. 15% off with promo code WATER15. That ends December 10th, so get your order in today. That is InfoWarsStore.com, and you already get the best deal there. Filter the poison out of your water and support the transmission. A win-win, win-win, win-win-win, win-win-win, win-win-win. ProPure at InfoWarsStore.com. See you on the nightly news tonight.